today's presentation, which is dealing with words and language and the original language of the universe. Uh, is there such a thing? Well, the Hebrews claim that Hebrew is the original language. Uh, the Phoenicians. Sanskrit. We heard it time and time again, where people will tell that their language was the first language, and all languages come from their language. The Greeks will tell you this about ancient Greek, etc. Well, I would say it's akin to saying that arguing that blues or rock or jazz had, is the first and the mother of all music, etc. Whereas uh, it would be better to argue that music is the original genre. It's music. So language needs to be understood as the umbrella of all the languages that are spoken. In the scriptures it talks about Babylon the Great, where God confused the languages. And prior to that there was one language, right? Well, look at the word confuse and you'll see that it contains fuse, to fuse. In other words, all languages confuse together mm -hmm. and syncretize and find one common root, one cause of all languages. And that's what we are going to absolutely, comprehensively, and exhaustively discover today. Don't need to be intelligent, super intelligent. Of course you need intelligence, but you don't need to be a genius. That's what I meant to say. Yes, we need intelligence to discover this, but it's so incredibly easy to see once you know what you're looking for. And you will know today, by the end of today's presentation, the root of all languages, the mother, the true, first, original, pure language. And not only that, the root and cause of all things, how atoms work, how energy works, how your body works, how everything manifests in this world. So without further ado, <coughs> these are the two symbols we're going to be working with. This is the yin and yang symbol that we all know. We've all seen this one, the black and white one. And we've also seen this one, the red and blue one. What's the difference? You'll never see any other colours of yin and yang. And if you do, they're not worth anything. They're not going to teach you anything. Only these two will teach you the secrets of all things. This is the monad. Monad Monos in Greek means one. Mono. This is the Godhead. This is the Dyad. Causal God, God of effects. Electricity. This is electricity. Red shift, blue shift. The South Korean flag has this yin and yang. It's dealing with the material world. The God of matter. The creator. This, on the other hand, is the causal. In the east, this would be called Krishna. The black one. And Radharani, the white one, or the golden one. Consort of Krishna. <coughs> this is dielectricity, black light, and white light is magnetic, magnetism. Rest and motion, the two coeternal principles. So, what we have here between these two yin and yangs, the monad and the dyad. is we have the field 
The field. What is the field? Well, it's the field where everything comes from. Where everything originates in, in the universe and manifests. And these are the three field modalities, always in this order. Dielectricity, magnetism and electricity. It's the Holy Trinity. Rest and motion. Magnetism in Sanskrit means to move. Dielectricity is the stillness from which all things come. You hear talk about dark energy, dark matter, black holes, etc. It's always black, black, black. Because quantum physics is pointing in the right direction. They're pointing to the blackness of things as the cause of all things. Black light is the absence of colour. White light is all colours. These two parts of the field do not vibrate. They are non-vibratory. This is a vibration. This is a radiation. It's very important to understand the difference between these two waves. Digital, analog. Pulse, vibration. This is a longitudinal, magnetism is longitudinal, scalar wave, standing wave. There's no vibration, it propagates horizontally. As the radial wave of radiation propagates in all directions, it encounters resistance in the medium in which it travels. Water, air, fire, earth, ether. No, there's not. That resistance will cause as it propagates longitudinally, it will cause a transverse wave, it's perpendicular, at 90 degrees. And it can go up and down according to its wave amplitude. And the amps that are in this longitudinal wave, if it's strong, it will go up higher. It will go like this. You see when there's strong waves in the ocean, the surfers go out, but want bigger amplitude. But when the ocean is still and quiet, and there's not enough longitudinal drive from out in the ocean, there's not enough radial wave strength, then the waves is just very, very weak, like the Atlantic here. I'm watching the Atlantic every day from my 24th story Ooh. here. <laughs> Tell you about that later, it's very lucky. It's beautiful sisters coming, it's supposed to be here, but probably coming late. Uh, he's offered me that beautiful place to stay. So I look out, and I've never seen such a calm ocean in my life. In Australia, the waves are like brutal in the Pacific Ocean. But the Atlantic here is just like a pond, and that's because there's not enough longitudinal drive. It's nice and slow. Oh, yes, thank you. How do I watch that? I think I can do this. That'll get it done. Thank you. So, when you have a pond, and you drop this nice still pond, and you drop a little pebble in the pond, you'll see that the waves go out and out and out. And they're forever growing. That circle was little when it began, and now look at it. That's magnetism. It's going out like this. No vibration. It's radiation. Radial. What vibrates is the effect. Redshift, blue shift. Redshift, blue shift. That's an effect. Electricity is a hybrid. It's the third 
field modality. Here you have stillness and motion. That's what this is all about. This is telling you nothing other than dielectricity and magnetism. The source. I would say this is the source and this is the force. But more correctly, that is the source and this is the force. Okay? More correctly, within the monad. Remember, the monad, although it's one, it is two. It's Radharani and Krishna. And they say in, in Bhagavad Gita that Radharani is billions of times more powerful than Krishna. Because magnetism is the true radial force of the universe. It's digital, it's a pulse. No vibration. The vibration, red shift, blue shift, red blood, blue blood, uh, red pill, blue pill, all the dualities you can think of. Hot water, cold water, pink for girls, blue for boys, red siren, blue siren, roses are red, violets are blue, Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. All the duality of the dyad world, the vibration world, the illusion in this hybrid material world, electrical. Here, this is transcendental. It transcends matter. It's beyond matter. It doesn't interfere with matter. It is the source and cause of matter. It's a pulse, like a heartbeat. Longitudinal wave, transverse wave. Pulse, wave. It's a pulse wave universe. It's not a particle wave universe. Thank you, Walter Russell. There are no particles. When they talk about quantum particles, forget about it. They don't exist. It's quantum pulses. So the spiritual causal world is digital. The world of effects is analog. Two different waves. So as this is propagating out like this, Red shift, blue shift, the electrical wave of vibration is a pulse in the middle of every one of these waves. So when they're looking for, in the double slit experiment, when they see the particle disappears, well of course it does because you can't see a pulse. It's not material, they'll never see a particle. You'll never see one. It's all just frequencies. From hydrogen to plutonium, it's all different rate of frequencies. Gold, silver, mercury, magnesium, sodium, they're all just frequencies. And what makes them difference is the difference between all the elements is that frequency. See the frequency there? How frequent is that to there? A million times a second, a billion, four, twenty-two, it matters not. The pulse sets the frequency, which sets the frequency of the wave, the transverse wave. It's all about frequency. Beginning with the pulse, ending with the wave. The magnetic radial wave is superior. It's 10 billion times more powerful than the electrical transverse wave. Thank you Faraday and Maxwell, Steinmetz, Tesla, Ken Wheeler, John Nowalski. Thank you to all these great men who revealed that magnetism, the spiritual causal energy of the universe, is 10 billion times more powerful and electricity. Electricity, this wave here, can only decay. It can only decay. It can never grow. Unless with resonance you keep sustaining that wave. But without any support, that wave must diminish. 
The magnetic wave can never diminish. It's always growing. Okay, I'm laboring this point because I'm building up to a whole bunch of PowerPoint presentations, uh, uh, slides, probably about 200. So you're, if you're a visual learner today, you're going to love this. I love making these PowerPoint presentations simply because I'm a visual learner. And when you see it, that's it. You're going to really absorb this. It's going to be hard going till 6 o'clock. Have a break at 3 for half an hour. Grab a coffee. But I have to build this up with this understanding. If you want to know the cause of all words in any language, you need three words. And there they are. Those are the three words. Atom. I put it there as atom because the vowels are interchangeable. Okay, so you have to learn or understand the law of interchangeables when it comes to language. But atom, the Egyptians said all is atom. In the Hermetica you will see that thousands of times. All is atom. So about eight years ago when I was meditating on that expression, always atum, I took it seriously. I took it for what its value, surface value, and I thought, well, the Egyptians were smart people. And they said, all, all is atom. And the, the Greeks described the physical nature of things as atomic. And today, quantum physics, even scientists too, everything's a bunch of atoms. It's all atoms. Empty atoms. So let's start from that point, shall we? If all is atom, then all languages must come from atom, the atom. This is the mother of all words, and these are called, I call redshift, blue shift, son and daughter of the mother atom. Because magnetism is feminine, dielectricity, black light, is Masculine. How many times have they taught you the other way around? That this is masculine, white light, and black light is feminine. How many times have you seen that? That's how I learnt it. It's the other way around. Stillness. Rest. This is rest and motion, or rather... Uh, um, acceleration. Force and motion. Who studied Ken Wheeler here? <laughs> I just can't believe I can't. Uh, inertia. Inertia. This is an inertia and acceleration. Very important to meditate on these words, guys. Really, I'm, I'm glad that came back to me. Because it's very important. This is inertia. In other words, rest. See that word rest? When you put a C in front of it, you get the word for Christ or Krishna. Black light. Rest in light. In the scriptures it says, one day we will be in the rest of the Lord Christ. Because that's what Christ means. Christ, Christ, rest. It's black light. How many black Jesuses have you seen? Yeah, Black Madonnas or black Jesus? Krishna's black. It's dielectric light. That's all it is. What you're learning here is science and the other side of the coin, theology. How you should learn theology. <coughs> this is how to learn theology. This is the Holy Trinity. Always starting with dielectricity, black light, magnetism to move. So we have force and acceleration, um, sorry, inertia and acceleration. And then you've got uh, force and motion. Those are the two co-eternal principles. Simplified, rest and motion. Order and chaos. And this is 10 billion times more powerful than electricity. It's very, very weak. 
It's a hybrid of these two. When these two move together, along this plane, you get red shift always at the bottom, blue shift always at top. Look at your torso. Blue chakra at the very top of your torso, red chakra at the very bottom of your torso. Because your torso Or so. Let's make it a U there. Play around a little bit. Can you see what a torso is? It's a torus field. We're going to come to this in a minute. Because this is a torus field. Blue shift, always at the top. Red hell. Down below. This is always way bigger, 1.618 times bigger. See that? The phi ratio, yeah? Phi. Or the Fibonacci ratio. The golden section, 1.618. Red shift, blue shift. That is a, tor a torus field. That's the field. They call it a torus field. That is the atom. That's what an atom is. They're never going to tell you that. They will never tell you. They'll tell you it's a neutron, a proton, and an electron, which is true. But you will never know that it is the field. They can't afford to tell you that. Because once you open your eyes and you see this form is the only form that exists and all numbers and letters come from this. This is God. That point there, that point there comes from counter space. See the hourglass here? That's time. This is space. Time. Kronos. Atum means Kronos. Saturn. Saturn means time. Chronology. Time. Space. This is pulsating. If you put your head here, and you have your beautiful green chakra here, in your heart, that's what you've got. You've got three chakras below, and you've got your violet up at the top. And this is the human being. It's an apple. This is how everything works. Your torso is a torus. Your body, made of atoms, is an anatomy. All is atom. So the secret is knowing what an atom is. All is atom. That's what we're going to do today and we will know the source of all things. Not just language. All things. <coughs> hyperbola. This is the hyperbola. In Greek this means hyperthrust. Bol means thrust. Bolistic. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, stop speaking bull? Because you are speaking in hyperbole. That's a word I remember learning when I was in, I don't know, grade one. <coughs> because we exaggerate when the kids say, I told you a hundred times, don't touch my sandwich. Well, really, you only said it three times. You're speaking hyper hyperbolically. Okay, you're speaking bull. Because this, that's the bull, Baal. The god Baal. Remember, vowels are interchangeable. The god Baal is the only god that exists because it's the hyperbola, which is the half of the Taurus field. Bowl means blue. You can see there, blue. 
rot backwards for tor, which also means rotate, is red. In most languages, in German, rot is red. Red shift, blue shift. It's right there in the word. It's right there in the word. It's telling you this is ballistic to hyperthrust and this is rotating. It's just going like this, like the Ouroboros is the same as the Ouroboros. R and L are interchangeable, always. The most important interchangeables you will ever master. Once you understand that in every language R and L are interchangeable, your minds will, will open. So the serpent that eats its tail, it's this. That's where it eats. Because everything is coming out of that point, thrusting outward, radiation, gravitation. Fission, fusion. Divergent centrifugal, convergent centripetal. And that's all that's going on. All atoms are doing that. Walter Russell has a good way of explaining it. There's Walter Russell. Okay. So let's do this. Red shift, blue shift. Thank you. Good idea. We don't need the light. So you see, there's the point of the hyperbola where two vortices, a red vortex, blue vortex, is always happening. That's an atom, that's a torus field. This is the only way energy happens. And it happens simultaneously. And this is happening also simultaneously. So if you pick this up and put it on top of that, you'll understand that as energy goes out that way, already it's coming back simultaneously. Two cones. And that's the field. Always. Red shift, blue shift. This guy here, David Lapointe, Prove this in a laboratory. You can see his Primer Fields, three part documentary. I would recommend you watch it. There he is there doing an experiment and he's knocking out these three bottles. Dark energy, dark matter, dark BS of quantum physics that they talk about because they're leading people astray. And he's proving in the laboratory with these two redshift, blue shift positively charged and negatively charged and he's got these little balls in here that are on the plane of inertia and they're all lining up on a plane because in the middle here is the plane of inertia the fourth part of the atom that never gets spoken about Ken Wheeler in his channel Theoria Apotheosis gets all shapes of magnets, all kinds of magnets and puts them behind a viewing film and you see the toroidal field of every magnet. And that's what's going on. So, there's uh, David Lapointe's experiment in the laboratory where he's making sonoluminescence. This here is sonoluminescence, sound and light. Sound and light. That's what they say God is. God is light. And the word of God, well, that's sound. There you go. There it is again. The Taurus field. In a laboratory. Once more. Galaxies. Supposed galaxies. They have here, this is the plane of inertia. And then this is the double 
Torres Field. There it is again, you see these jets, this explosion. Remember the word hyperbole, hyperthrust. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about thrust and rotation. Thrust and rotation. Okay. The uh, Copernican model of the universe. Here it is again. There it is there. And there's the yin and yang of electricity, the mundane world, the four elements. These are the four elements. Earth, fire, air, and uh, now that's earth, water, fire, and air. Pepsi. Red and blue, always. White, red and blue. White is magnetic light, causing the division of the Republicans and the Democrats. It's always, it's always that. Alright? Now we're getting somewhere. Know how to get out of this? You're in a PowerPoint. You can't. Yeah. You, you can't minimize it. No. Can't minimize it. Don't you think? You've got enough. Here we go. You see your battery terminals, anode, cathode, blood moon, blue moon. It's all about red shift, blue shift. The rainbow. Red shift, blue shift. The seven electricities. The seven colours. In, same in your torso. You've always got the Krishna in blue. If Krishna's got either blue or black, Radharani is either white or red. Pay attention and take note. You've got your blue gods, you've got your red devils. The superheroes is always red pill, blue pill, is always that polarity. Red, blue. Hot water, cold water, you've got your blue arteries, red veins. Red light district, blue light for children. Again, red blood, blue blood, the rivalry. It's always, you see, America's divided. It's the colours of division and polarity to keep you away from the white and black light. That's all it is. And it works. Provolone antipasto. Pro and anti. Roses are red, violets are blue. The pH. Yeah, the red bad guys and the blue good guys, yeah? Red shift, alkalinity is blue shift. Same with the spectrum of matter, it's red shift, blue shift. Red star kachina, blue star kachina. Okay. Alright, that's exhausted that. Let's get him out of the way. Because the slide presentation that we will begin after the break, after I've finished with this. You're probably thinking, oh no, he's going to do more of that. No, we're already <laughs> exhausted. No. There's more to go. <laughs> That's how you begin your journey. There you are, the golden egg. Remember you are, you have an aura around your torso. Aura 
comes from gold, oro, or order. Time. Time and gold are always this interrelatedness between gold, the gold that you are, and this egg is the same shape as this is the golden eggs. These are the golden eggs. Jack and the beanstalk climbing the beanstalk finds the golden eggs. See? This is the apple. This is the uh, the pine cone. You see the pine cone imagery in all the buildings, especially the Freemasonic buildings? Well, it's this, because it has the fire ratio shape. And inside your body is a tree of life. Now, anyone who speaks Spanish knows that tree is arbol. Bol. And it's your nervous system. And your spinal column has a part of it called lumbar. Bar is bowl. Lumbar is tree. The tree of life, your torso, the spinal column in there, that's the tree. That's why they call, they call these, this is the phallic, the male member. This is the torus, the feminine member. And it comes from uterus. Ut uterus. Every woman has a uterus in it. In, in their bodies, and the male is the arbor, and the tree of life is actually the phallic, because it passes life. So you'll find this tree of life motif everywhere. There's the placenta, the tree of life, where you enter, the place where you enter the world in the placenta. And this is the tree because it's the arbol, hyperbol. That's why these, these three words, remember, atom, bol, and tor, I like to reduce it to, actually, I, I make this bull, the bull and the torus. The bull and the torus. Blue and red. This is left turning. This is right turning. R and L. Red and blue. Right turning radiating, left turning gravitating. So you have a pulse, a heartbeat. What happens when you get your pulse checked? They're checking your heartbeat. It's a pulse. Of course everything pulsates. So behind all of this visual beauty that you see in the world, this vibration which seems material to you, is a digital pulse. It's digitally pulsating in this analogue beautiful world. So, uh, the, bull, the bull and the torus. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at words that have this in them. Have you noticed there's a lot of bull words in English? I'm capable, able, destructible, and tall words, actor, creator, manifestor. Why do probably 50% of words throughout the universe end in tor and bull? Because tor is rotating and bull is thrusting, it's energy. Moving energy. And that's what magnetism does. It's, everything is in flux. Everything is moving. All atoms are moving. It's a flow of energy which is here one day, gone the next. In the transcendental world, nothing changes. This is eternal and infinite. Eternal and infinite. Temporal and finite. Temporal, there's your time, the hourglass, 
the bull, we have the word obelisk, bell, obelisk, bell. And it's beautiful in Italian and Spanish, bel, bello, means beautiful, because it's the beautiful one, bel, the beautiful god, the golden god, the atom, all is atom. Temporal, finite. Infinite, eternal, unchanging, forever changing. Remember what you looked like in the mirror ten years ago? You've changed. But you're still the same. Because you're always the same. I liken this to a computer. The computer has come along to teach us many things. But mostly it will teach you about the Holy Trinity of spirit, soul and matter. Which is what you are. You are spiritual, unchanging. You are soul, which changes. You can lose your soul, you can gain your soul. And body is always changing. You live, you reincarnate, you die. So you look at your computer and all your information is stored on a hard drive. But when you open your computer, well, the screen shows you what shows you what's in the file, which is the spirit. The screen here, we can liken that to the body. And the RAM between the file and the screen, we can call that the soul. So, if you have a hard drive full of information, does it weigh more than a brand new one, which is empty, and yet this is full. This one here is full, 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 full. 30 gigabyte, is that a lot? I don't know. <laughs> What's a lot of gigabytes these days? 120. Huh? 120 gigabyte, okay. Here we have 120 gigabyte of information. It's almost infinite information at the tip of your fingers. And this is the same one, let's imagine this is the same hard bucket drive, brand new, I haven't put anything on it. Which one weighs more? Surely this one weighs more? No. It doesn't. Because that information is in counter space, it's not spatial. It's ones and zeros, they don't occupy any space, it's just energy, it's frequency. That's who you are in the transcendental world. You're not spatial. Forget about it. You have to try and meditate and understand this. So, all of that information, infinite almost, is in counter space. You can't... Remember the film Zoolander? Where he's breaking the computer because he wants to get the file out? He's like, where's that file, is it? You won't find it. It's like a doctor operating your, your liver to find that horrible emotion which is making you sick and pulling it, oh there it is, oh that's when his mother um, you know, beat him up, oh god that emotion, throw it out of him. you can't do that because emotions, they're not in space they're in another body which is not spatial like your thoughts, there's no you know, you can't fill your head up with thoughts because now it's full, right? you've got no more space it's all full, because it's not spatial Thinking is not spatial. So, what a good thing that we have computers. We can understand how we manifest in this vibratory world from the radial world of magnetism, which has all the information. This is why every time you reincarnate, it's like rebooting your computer. 
all the information comes to your screen, you're writing a book every day, you write a little bit, your autobiography. Today, I'm writing chapter two. Turn the computer off. Next morning, you reboot. Every day, you make improvements to your file. So each life that you reincarnate, reboot, what do you do? Make improvements? Or do you do destructive works to perhaps put a virus on that file so it corrupts? And then in three months' time, you don't have a published work that you can publish your autobiography. Eventually, you want a finished work. So what are we aiming at? We're aiming to finish our good work here by making improvements every time we reincarnate. And that information is always stored with God in the unchangeable world, which is eternal and infinite. Here you are not conditioned. Unlimited. Unconditioned. Here, you have a red chakra, a blue chakra, a torso, an anatomy. It's nice when you see the word. Anatomy. Conditions, limitations. Here you are limited. Can you fly? Uh, can you see as far as an eagle? Can you hear as well as a bat? Can you smell as well as a dog? Your smell is limited. Your eyesight's really limited. Some most of us are wearing glasses. And we're even more limited than other people. Yeah? Gustavo. Hello. Amen. This guy, guy crashed into me, man. Yeah. Just come here. That's all right. Yeah. It wasn't much. It's cool. We're getting here. It's filling up. I'm, I'm, here. I'm here. You made it. You made it. 13 I'm people here. say they were coming, so what have we got? 15. <laughs> it's cool. It's coming along. So, <clears throat> you've been rebooted, reincarnated, and you've got this red chakra and blue chakra in your torus field, in your body. And remember, this is like the computer screen. You can change this. You can change the file, you can change all this information easier. You know? Make modifications, improve it. So that when this is done and it gets wiped out, you die, your body dies, your soul returns. This is the soul. White light is soul. Black light is spirit. No colour, all colours. So we've got B and T, bull, bull and Taurus. B is the first letter of the alphabet, not A. Just ask the uh, Hebrew scholars. A is not the first letter. B is the first letter. T, Tav, in Hebrew is the last letter. So you've got the first and the last, the bull and the Taurus. Anything in between is this. Remember I said you only need these three words, Atom, Bull and Tor, and all words in every language come from them, all of them, as you will see, because I haven't even started to prove this comprehensively and exhaustively, and there will be never any argument ever about this subject again after today. Because I've got hundreds of slides proving this in all languages, not just English. English just happens to be the best one. And it's very appropriate that the world is now speaking English. Anglish, angelish, it's the language of angels. Absolutely never doubt it. It is the best language for astrotheology and for religious science. Absolutely the best. Pure and unadulterated. Anyone who tells you that English is hybrid and it comes from French and Norman and Latin and Greek and Teutonic and Nordic, block your ears, it comes from this 
in its purest form, the most pure language that ever was, is English. I've proven that time and again. I do astrotheology in Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish on my YouTube channel. You can see all the playlists. I've done hundreds of those languages. And I do syncretism beautifully in those languages, but nothing like English. English is the language of all languages. This is all intact. All of this is all intact. Like a Swiss watchmaker can get all his little gears, cogs, springs, voila, in 10 minutes he's got his little lady's watch that you can hardly, and he's put it all together. That's how English puts theology all together. Astrology, alchemy, all of it. English. So, Okay, well, let's do this. What we're going to see is bowl. I'm going to give you a few, few um, better words or other words and variants of this soul. That's the sun, solar, because that's the sun. All atoms are little suns, little stars. And that's what you are. Over here we have a sister. Over there we have a spinster. Over here we have a master. Outside we've got mobsters, uh, monsters, gangsters, fraudsters. We've got some rock stars. We've got some superstars. Everybody's a star. Because everybody's this. We're all stardust. Whether you want to be a monster or a master, it's your choice. What about the youngsters? They're also young stars. And they get told at school, if you be good, little Johnny, you can get a gold star to take home. And then if you do well in athletes, you go to Olympic Games, you'll get not bronze, not silver, gold medal, young star. So everybody is this that's in your heart, that's the core. Pulsating. Boom, 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 boom. And this. Your heart is making this radial wave. That's why people, when you meet someone with a beautiful heart, you say, oh, they were radiating. Their heart was radiating. You would never say their heart was vibrating. Oh, a beautiful person needs a heart was just vibrating. You can say he had good vibes. He emanated good vibes. Or oh, that guy had just awful bad vibes. Yeah, because vibration doesn't come from the heart. It comes from the mind, thought waves and the liver emotion waves. Noisy minds, toxic emotions. Blah, blah, blah. But the heart doesn't do that. The heart radiates radially. <coughs> it's a radial wave. And don't you like it when people think that you've got a beautiful radiating heart? Don't you, wouldn't you want that? Or do you want people to walk away and say, oh, God, that person had some bad vibes. No one likes that. This is great water. Thank you. Panna. There you go. Let's give this corporate. <laughs> Aqua banna. In the glass. In Toscana. I did uh, syncretism in, Tal in Florence in 2013. Four days in Florence of syncretism. They loved it. So, uh, Tuscany is a beautiful place. Soul, bowl, Remember, that's the soul and the spirit. This is the body. Soul, there's no mistake why the sun and your soul have the same pronunciation. Soul and soul. Because it all comes from this. Whole. So the whole is holy. Like the gods of Olympus. The gods of Olympus. Holy. Jupiter. You know, all those holy gods. Right? 
So a pole, it's also a wormhole. These are wormholes. So the sun, it must be a hole. People look at the sun, they see something round and they think, oh, that's got to be a sphere. It has to be a ball. Ball. By the way, that's also the word ball because these are balls. They're spherical. But does that mean that the moon and the sun are actually physical objects that are spheres? No, it doesn't. They are holes. They are holes, empty holes. Check out the work of Eric Dolhart, one of the greatest scientists on YouTube who ever lived, who talks about the sun being an empty hole. It's just the only arcing that goes on in the sun is on the surface. The new moon. Have you ever seen a new moon? And then you see this black, you see this disc, this ring, and then you see the moon going like this. You're looking at a hole. It's totally holy. Holy hole. So when when you your heart radiates healthily, it becomes whole. It's not a hole. You see, people who don't radiate. You've met them. Certainly no one in here because I can feel everyone's goodness. This is goodness from the heart radiating. But there are people who that energy is going into, they're sucking energy in. They're not, they're not giving it back out. They're not. That's what they call soulless people with holes. See, what happens is if you don't protect your aura and you don't do good works, with integrity. What happens is that entities come in and attach themselves to your aura and they find holes and they find their way in and they corrupt this the file. Which is this is the file, this is the RAM, and this is the screen of the computer. So this is the file. You don't want to what happens if you get a virus? When you get a new computer, it runs beautifully, very fast, right? And then you start going on, you know, you start browsing certain sites or whatever, and Trojan jumps on your computer, and all of a sudden, my computer's slowing down. I've got to go and get it cleaned up. Because why? It's corrupted. That's the same with your soul and your spirit. If you, when you come into body, if you misuse your body and use it for bad purposes like drunkenness, stealing, cheating, lying, pornography, uh, all kinds of abuses, anger, this will also, in the transcendental realm, will also get corrupted. And that's when you see people who look sickly, who don't radiate, there's no glow in their eyes. You can see a dim grayness, something's wrong. And then when you see people get old and all sort of, you know, they're walking like this, that's fair enough, we're all going to know. Uh, uh, why? Well, it's because this has been attacked. See? There's ways to keep this alive and charged forever. You don't have to die. Death's not part of the whole scheme of things. It's only a temporal thing. And that's because it's corrupted, like the fire. If you can keep viruses away from your computer, you will always have your files in your hard drive clean. They'll always be there. You can go travelling for a year, come back home, reboot your computer, bang, there's your files. You open them up, oh yeah, it's still there. Great. I'm going to improve those today. And that's the same with your soul. When you go back to unconditioned cause, away from this body, you really want to have gold. Remember that little golden egg? We started out as a golden egg. You want to keep that gold pure. And you will. Because you need that currency. Otherwise, you will not ascend. 
by good deeds, good works, keep that strong, keep that heartbeat strong, strong, clean. And your mind is the head and your liver over here. Emotion waves and thought waves, that's these kind of waves. See people who've got busy minds, oh. and you see them walking down the street and they're talking to themselves like they're crazy. Yeah, that's because they've got demons or egregores which they have created. Thought waves, emotion waves. If you have some emotional problem from three years ago and you keep thinking, oh gee, my brother, he stole my money, and you keep thinking and thinking, it's going to grow and grow and grow to become its own autonomous entity called a demon. You grow your own demons. You have to stop those thoughts. You have to, he hurt me, that's cool. I'm moving on. Okay, so you move on, otherwise you will, they will attach themselves to you and they will become entities that will hound you for the rest of eternity. You have to shed those entities, clean this field and become whole and holy. The scriptures teach you how to be holy. They say, drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. People who practice pornography and loose conduct will not inherit God's kingdom, etc. Not. Is that because God is evil, He's going to judge you? No, there's no God that's going to judge you, it's you. If you rock up at the cinemas with two dollars and you say, oh, I want to see the Joker, thank you, and the guy there says, uh, no, it's ten dollars. What? Are you, uh, um, what's the word, discriminating because I'm yellow or because I'm black? No, it's got nothing to do with the colour, but it's, you don't have the money. You can't say, oh, because I'm gay? <laughs> no, there's no discrimination. You've judged yourself. You haven't got enough currency. So you have to go back, do some work, earn some more money, 10 bucks, thank you, I want to see the Joker. Oh, great. I'm going. It doesn't matter whether you're gay, black, white, tall, fat, short. There's no judgment. God doesn't judge you. You judge yourself. If you don't have the goods, the money to pay the ferryman to cross the river Styx, that's the river. Here's your body. You gotta get back home. Uncorrupted. And you gotta have the currency. You can't go with two dollars. Remember, there's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold. And she's buying. Stay with him. Revelation. Jesus says, buy gold off me, so you may be saved. Buy white garments so no one sees your shameful nakedness. Buy salve for your eyes so you can open them and see. It's up to you. It's your choice, monster or old master. We're all stars. We're all going back to the true star. Remember, star is where you start your journey. Everything starts from the stars and finishes in black light because black is where you go back where there is no lack there is no lack in black everything is here this is where your file is, your spirit and the spirit can never die soul can, you can lose the soul and body, of course, it's only a vehicle to express what's here. This is an expression of effects from the cause. And Ram is the soul, that's why the sun is called Ram, Sri Ram. It's Ram. There's no mistake why they call Ram the delivery system from the file to your screen. It's Ram. Random access memory. That's what your soul is. It's Ram, Rama. In your heart. So we've got bowl, soul, whole, holy, uh, fall, foliage. These are the two feet. When Adam and Eve ate the apple, that's the apple. The apples of Apollo. In proto-Celtic, In the proto-Celtic word abal means apple. Abala. Abala. Bala in 
Persian means divine. It's always this. All words come from this. From bowl, tor, and atom. All words. All things, all thoughts, all emotions, everything. Always atom. Foliage. See, what happened was they saw they were naked when they ate the apple when they... Because you see, you're not naked here <laughs> because there's no, there's no body. It's, remember, it's not spatial. But when you jump, you eat the apple. These are the abals. Oh, oh, I'm naked. In other words, I have a body. So God clothed Adam and Eve with fig leaves. Or fig is figure. And these are the two leaves. We'll see that as we go. Foliage. So B, remember, that's the first letter of the alphabet, bull, and tor, T, is the last letter of most alphabets. It's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet anyway. That's the fifth last in English. But we're going to see all that. So you have to remember that this bowl, this obelisk, this phallic, phal is also F it comes F, which comes from B and B and V, Vol, here we go, there's another one, Vol. Volution. To volunteer to come to incarnate. Volume. This is voluminous. Magnetism is volume okay, because it makes space. Time, space. Time, space. These pulses, they make time because they make the frequency. If you're ever sitting in a bath one day, just open the tap a little bit so it drips slowly and you see ripples. You see it. And then you just turn it up a bit. Doop, doop, doop. You see quick ripples. Different frequency. That's all that's going on here. This sets the frequency for everything. Everything is frequency. Thank you, Tesla. Energy, frequency, vibration. Is that the third component of his three-part energy, frequency, vibration? Yeah. Yep. Frequency happens in both waves, the longitudinal and the transverse. And that's the cross. That's what the cross is. You see the Christian cross? Well, that's magnetism and the transverse wave, which creates the wave. That's all it is. The cross is a symbol of electricity. Everything is. Nothing is not. It's an electrical world. When you go to the Mormon church, you will learn about the God of electricity. Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah, the God of electricity. When you go to the Mayans, the Sanskrit Indians, the Hindus, wherever you go, wherever you go, the God of electricity. Buddha, was he a real man? He sat under a tree. I wonder which tree it was. <laughs> well, Buddha means body. That's all it is. That's Buddha. And that's the body. And the tree that he sat under to meditate is the lumbar here. The five, you've got your coccyx, you've got your sacral, you've got your lumbar, your thoracic, and your cervical. The lumbar is in the middle. Lumbar means tree. Lumberjack. And I am a body, Buddha, meditating under a tree. You think yeah. <laughs> these people make me laugh? When I was running a restaurant in 1981, I was 18. Uh, this uh, Buddhist uh, consortium, there was about 12 of them, they came in to get some food. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> who are these people? They're orange, very orangey clothes, and they're walking nice, and they sat down and ordered their food. And I was like, very impressed. I was only a teenager. And uh, one of them, uh, I just sat there and chatted with them, and one of them said, oh, I'm going to show you something special. I'm going to go to the car and I'm going to get you a real bone, a relic of the Buddha himself. Back then I thought, wow, wow, I've seen a bone of Buddha. 
It's like Jesus. How many, how many crosses? A medieval writer once wrote, if all the crosses that claim to be from the true cross of Christ were put together, you could build a hundred Noah's Arks. Because that's how much BS that all of these stories they tell you. Every church, every monastery has got a relic of Buddha or, or Krishna. None of them incarnated ever. It's you. You are Buddha because you have a body and who's sitting next to you? Your buddy. He's my buddy. Of course he's your buddy because he's got a body. And that's the buddy. Buddha. <clears throat> so, we always go back to this for all of our words. And I've only just begun because... The heavy going is coming, guys, so we're going to have to go and get a coffee at 3 o'clock right. and really get energised because your mind is going to... I won't be able to spend as much time as I'd like to on all these slides, but I want to get it on film for the world because this is the first time ever released. Yeah. I've been working on this PowerPoint presentation since 2014 and I've never had an opportunity yeah. to, to release it, so this is how privileged you are today oh, if you wow. feel that way. I feel privileged that I'm sharing with you. There's probably about 200 slides and it's really heavy going. Each one I could spend an hour on. It's so much full of information proving only one thing, that all words come from Atum, Bull and Tor, the Bull and the Taurus, Blue Shift, Red Shift. It's going to be proven today and you'll never doubt it ever again. You'll go away and you'll have the keys to understanding not only where every single language comes from, but where every single phenomena in this temporal, finite world comes from. It comes from there. This is the silence and the stillness. This is the effect, noise, movement, etc. Do we put our faith in this world which is transient and fleeting? And one minute it's destroyed by fire, and the next by water. It's always a fire destruction, and a water destruction. Noah's flood, etc. This is because why? Because it's transient, temporal, fleeting, mundane, ephemeral. Here, that's the Father. That's why God the Father is so special. It's not because of patriarchy. Please don't buy into patriarchy and matriarchy and everything like that. It really irritates me when people write to you and say, Oh, Santos, you said that the moon is evil and you said that Saturn is evil. Yeah, well, have you seen where I say that the moon is my goddess and that I love the moon because I'm extolling her virtues? But in another presentation, I have to extol and tell you how bad she can be. Because that's how the, demi the Demiurge works. This is the dyad, and this is the monad. In the monad, there is no good and evil. It doesn't exist, because there's no polarisation as such. Pole, that's another one. Pole. Polarised light. The two twins. Whoops. Let's be, let's go slow. <laughs> Pollux and Castor. See, Bol and Tor. Remember, Pollux is the divine one because this is polarized light. Lux is divine light. Lumen is mundane light. Lux, lumen. So, polarized light. Pollux and Castor because Astor means star and that's a Taurus field and he was the one that Pollux the divine had to go down and save you know, from his, um, um, his he was mortal Pollux is immortal and the Taurus field of course is immortal because it's temporal so that's why Pollux has got to go down polarized light to save his brother the Gemini twins and what have you noticed when you look up? Have a look tonight at midnight. You'll see the twins up there. Grab your phone, put your app on, and you'll see a red light for Pollux, uh, for Castor. No, actually, it's Pollux is red and Castor's uh, greenish blue. It's right there. Mars is red, clearly. Venus is blue, clearly. Because Mars.
Adam is Adam. What does Adam mean? Hebrew scholars, what does Adam mean? Red. 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 Adam means red. Adama. It's terrible, isn't it? My writing. I can, I can write well. I, I can write really neatly, but I never do my presentations. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's do it nice. Adama, the earth, is red earth. Earth, heaven. Adam means red. How do you say Mars in Hebrew? Ma. Adim. Ma Adim. It's almost like Madam, isn't it? In fact, Adam is a madam. So Ma Adim, Mars, Adam is red. Just look up. And v- v- Venus is blue. Well, that's Eve. And all you have to do is look at a few languages and you'll work that out. Adam and Eve. Thread shift, blue shift. All the twins, Pollux and Castor. Blue shift, bowl, tor is red. Cain and Abel. Cain means red. Abel means blue. Jacob and Esau. Esau means red. Jacob means blue. All the twins. It's red and blue. Red and blue. Red and blue. Red blood, blue blood. Red veins, blue arteries. No, the other way around, isn't it? Okay. Arteries are red. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not doctor, doctors here. We're just, it's, one's red and one's blue. That's all it is. It's all red and blue. Roses are red, violets are blue. And so when you understand this, that's why I really laboured this. Thank you for who went and got this whiteboard for me. <laughs> Thank you, brother. And um, because I really want to establish before we hit the, uh, the presentations, and I'm still going to go, because I, I know in my mind there's still more to come to, to do here, because it's, um, it's very, very important that everything is this. Nothing is not this. Don't imagine that you'll read any kind of book, whether it's Bhagavad Gita or um, the Bible or any scripture at all, anywhere. Oh, there it is. And you're not reading about this. This is Christ. This is Jesus. This is Moses. This is Mars. This is Saturn, Hercules, Little Red Riding Hood. Humpty Dumpty, Santa Claus, it's all this. There's nothing that is not this. All words come from here. <clears throat> and this is the true model of the atom. This is a neutron, the plane of inertia. Everything gets zeroed out here. This is the Taurus. This is the bull. Voltage. Vol is vol, voltage. Amps, amplitude. How how many amps do you have going through those cables? What does amps mean? Amplitude. The wider the current, the wider the hose, the more water flows through it. And that's wave amplitude. These are the amps. And this is the ohms, the resistance. Volts, amps. Ohms. It's always a trinity. Dielectricity is this. It's expressed in the plane of inertia. This is the proton. This is the electron. Thank you, Walter Russell. Walter Russell has a laugh. He says, oh, all of these scientists talking about uh, neutron, uh, uh, neutrinos and what are all these little quantum particles? It's, it's a load of BS, pure BS, because there is only dielectricity, magnetism, and electricity. So when they start talking about all these neutrinos, they're 
little, the, all they're doing is talking about different magnitudes of magnetism. Because they don't exist, thank you Walter Russell, in his book Atomic Suicide, where he absolutely put to death the stupid theory of the modern atom, which is uh, and how everything they say works atomically, because it doesn't. And it's about time, oh, my, my heart burns with zeal against the, the evil lies that the perpetrated on us to dumb us down so we don't see any of this. And it's so, this to me, I was born knowing this pretty much. I just I knew that this would come to me in, in its wholeness one day. Maybe I had a memory from past lives, and I don't know. And I don't care to know. All I care to know is I want to know all the truth, and I don't want to swallow it any lies anymore because it's hurting us. Like CERN? CERN in Europe, they want to split the atom? Yeah, it's split the atom. Crazy. How are they going to split this? You know, how are they going to split this? These are u units of light. You can't do that. All you can do is activate that so that it expresses itself more powerfully. Because imagine, I mean, you, you've got to think there's different shapes and frequencies of atoms. They're not all the same. Hydrogen is the only atom that doesn't have a plane of inertia. It's only a proton and an electron. Then helium, here we go, let's do that. Gen means to generate. Hydro is water. The Greeks told us that everything comes from water. And what is the sun? Hydrogen. But it is also helium, number two. One, the monad. Two, the dyad. Helium, everything under hell, all the elements below helium is hell. That's what it is. I'm telling you. You just have to pay attention. Hydrogen, DRO, is the door. <coughs> Remember I was saying all the words that end in tor? Actor, creator, manifestor. Eh? Well in Spanish it's creador. Uh, manifestador. I don't know what that's but it's all door. Well that's, that's the door. It's the doorway. The torus is the door. Tor is the door. Because it's a hole, it's a wormhole, it's a door. So when you see the moon, like I said before, you can see the moon is clearly a ring. Clearly, clearly, clearly. Especially on the new moon, the first day of the new moon, you will see this beautiful ring. And you'll see a black hole here. And rest assured, rest assured, it's not a solid ball. It's a hole. It's a wormhole. And all the ancients ever said that the moon is the ovaries of the, the solar system. And souls come into Earth from the Moon. And they go back through the Sun. Because the Sun is a hole, it's a wormhole back to cause. That's why Jesus says, no one goes to the Father except through me. The same, the Son of God, S-U-N, S-O-N, is saying that you have to go back through the Sun. That's why we must be heliognostics, helio Solar heroes. So helium, all the elements under there that have these, neutron, proton, proton. I left the space in there. What would you put in there? How do you say fire in Greek? Pyro. Pyro. Rot. Red. Electron. L is for liquid. Proton. Electron. That's all it is. Redshift. Proton. Right turning. Radiating. Centrifugal. Divergent light. Blue. Blue is left turning, converging, 
centripetal light. Just be familiar with the two lights, the bowl and the tall, and you'll get it, you'll get everything. It'll all come to you. It's the pyroton, it's fire. L is liquid. The electron is liquid. This is liquid, and that's why you've got left and right. Because in language, L and R are called the two liquids. What's a liquid consonant? It's one that can be sustained. You can't do that with a P. Or a B. You can do it with a V. You see, it's a V becomes a V just to liquefy it. It's a liquefied B. B. The letter R is special, the proton, pyro, fire, is special because it's the only pulsating letter in the alphabet. That's a pulse. When you speak Italian, rosso, rosso. You see, in English there's no Scottish dude. Lucky the Scottish. You need the letter R, you need to learn how to vibrate. Because the L... The R is called the rotic liquid. Rotic. Ro. Kiro is Christ. Kiro. Ro, the rotic. That letter, it's always there. Hare Krishna. It's in Hare, it's in Krishna. Hare Rama, it's in Hare and it's in Rama. It's in Christ. It's in all the holy words. Is Ra El. You'll always find it in the middle of the words. Abraxas. Abraham. Because it's the pulse. The 18th letter, 666. The letter R. Radiation, rage, redshift. It pulsates. It's a rhotic liquid. L is a lateral liquid because it comes from the lateral sides. But it's a liquid. Right and left turning. And that's what electricity does. Have you ever heard of electricity arcing? Go and see an electrician and tell him to play around with electricity. And all you will hear is... L is like a flat line and R is like a vibration. But it's not a vibration. It's a pulse. So don't let anyone talk to you about particle wave universe. Particles don't exist. Thank you, JJ Thompson, discoverer of the electron. Funny how his name has Tom in it. JJ Thompson, because he's interested in atoms. And the first guy who did the, um, Thomas Young, who did the first uh, uh, slit, uh, double slit experiment 200 years ago, Thomas Young. Yeah, you yeah. can't make this stuff up, guys. You can't. So, thank you. He, he went almost on his deathbed, J.J. Thompson. He says, please don't think that the electron is a particle. A photon is a particle. There's no particles. He was trying to tell us that they're all pulses. No wonder when you, you, you notice the particle that disappears and then there's the wave. Oh, God have mercy on their souls when these poor fools who go and pay for their education to be dumbed down, to be absolutely reduced to stupidity. We have been told in the scriptures it's a pulse wave universe. The wave is the illusion, it's temporal and finite, and the pulse is... Eternal and infinite. Remember the word eternity, guys, because that's what you are. Don't buy into death. What's death? Anyone going to help me with that one? You've seen my presentations. Earth. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. But what's the opposite of Earth? <coughs> the Hebrews, ether, the heavens, and your little pinkies, what? Earth mudra. If you need to earth, 
earth to ether, why do you give people the thumbs up all the time? Is this rude or is this good? No. It's like, is a knife good? Well, it's not when it's killing people, but when it's buttering bread to feed the poor, it's good. It, it's good if you intend it to be good. But the point is, you go from ether down to earther. It's the same word. Mal, uh, Kitha in Hebrew to Malkuth. So when you die, it is the doorway. You can either <coughs> see this, my body, the torso is in the shape of a T. A nat tom me. It's a tomb. Because uh, Pollock's divine light, looks, has been entombed in my atoms. Because they're all made of light. So no luminescence. So this is the tomb. From the womb to the tomb. From sem Soma to Sema. Thank you, Plato. Same rhyme. Soma, Sema, womb, tomb. Every language does this. So, this is the baptism of death, earth. Earth and death are the same word. You can see it clearly. That's why you go to church and get baptised in water. Because the next step from earth... The universal solvent, water, cleanses your body, earth. Then the next is air, so you get an air baptism. Thank you, John the Baptist. And then a spirit, uh, a fire baptism, which is the highest baptism. Have you heard of someone saying, oh, he's been, been baptised in fire? He really had his fire baptism, because that's the ultimate baptism. So you are going through the doorway back to ether. That's why you want to leave your earth body, and this is a good word, oh, I long for this day, to be taken from this plane and go back to here, where my fire is waiting for me, so I can bring all my improvements back with no viruses and no corruption, and I'm not going there, man. I'm going back to the black, back, don't go to the white light, because the white light is good, but you don't go to the white light. Because white is blank, blanco, and you start blank again. You don't want to start wiped blank if you get seduced by Jesus. Christ is the black light. Remember, Christ and Krishna mean black. There will be Christ and there will be Jesus. Black and white light. They're both good. Depending on whether you need to reincarnate again and be blanco and be blanked out, or whether you want to go back to the black where there is no lack. So, I think I'll leave it at that. You're climbing up Jacob's Ladder from Malkuth to Kitha, from Earth to Ether. And so, don't buy into the red ship, blue ship, illusion, temporal, that you're going to die. Oh, oh, my mother died. I'm going to cry for a month. Yeah, sure, you'll miss it, but you don't need to cry. Unless she was evil and you... Yeah, then she's probably not going to go back to here real quick. It's probably going to get blocked in this place here. The ghost, the spirit will always be blocked from ascending. But eventually, through pain, pleasure and pain, pleasure, pain, you'll get back to the bliss. Bliss. Remember, all words, just watch, pay attention. Bolis. It's the bowl. Remember, everything goes back to transcendence and everything comes out. This is akin to white light. This is akin to black light. Red and blue. They're doing the same thing. Transcendental, temporal. Same function. This is non-vibratory. This is vibratory. This is a radial wave. It's radiation, vibration. Radiation, Ra, the god Ra, is superior to vibration. Thank you. Let's go and get some coffees and uh, whatever. All right. So I'm starting from the start, okay? And you see rest and motion. Black light is resting. And white light, mag in Sanskrit means to move. Magnetism, magnitude, etc. Magnificent, magnanimous, 
all these beautiful magnetic words. Magic. <clears throat> I love this word. Mary Magdalene. And we are... <clears throat> why do I keep getting an awful sound here? I'm going to turn that down a bit. That's one, two. It's the wrong volume up there. There you go. No. Master volume. Master volume. There it is. One, two, one, two, okay. Alright, so, prima materia, the first matter. Notice mat is backwards for tan. Always look at the words backwards, anagrams, mix them up, jumble them up. And remember the interchangeables. R and L, number one interchangeables. Have you, have you, I don't remember which movie it was, but there was a Chinese guy, he says, No fly lie, fry rye. <laughs> See? One's got an R in it, one's got an L in it. I had a Japanese wife. Been to Japan five times, I did musical tour, touring there with my band. Um, and I learned Japanese, and uh, I saw that in their language. They don't say R, they say L, you know, instead of R. So, fry, ride, fly, lie, it's always these two interchangeables, the rhotic and the lateral. So you've got, <coughs> let's mirror that, motor, the motor of the universe, the mother, matter, it's all there. Material, maternal. Anyway, more will come on that. But that's what you're looking at. That's what atom is. It's the motor. Atoms are motors. They're little motors. Sonoluminescent motors. And this is the first matter. And it divides the, the, the dyad. If anyone's a sound tech, you can play around with that and try and get that echo if you if you want, uh, if you want to be brave and give it a go, but I'll try and keep it. It's not that bad. It's not that bad? Okay. So this, the dyad breaks down into the, the tetrad, and then you've got the triad, the trinity, salt, mercury, and sulfur. We'll go through these. <clears throat> so, notice the word stop, it has top in it, because at the top of the wave, there's always that crest where you rest. It's all wave science, all these words. They're all in the wave. Okay? So, you'll find that um, the Hebrew language, as I said before, starting from Aleph, Be, Beth, and Tav, this is the word rest, a crest. Kaf, Resh, Shin, Tav. You can see it's right there. Crest. It's the last four letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? And here we have it as Christo. What's Christ doing hiding in the English alphabet? I've been pointing this out for years. And then you'll notice here, Abracadabra at the start. And then Lumen. These are all different kinds of light hiding, embedded in our language. It is amazing. Yeah. Because Christ is the hidden one. It's hidden in the alphabet. And everyone says it, doesn't it? Q-R-S-T-U in Italian. Q-R-S-T-U. Cristo. It's right there. Abracadabra is the opening light of the proton. That's why it's got that prominent R in it. Lumen. You get words like um, laminin. Laminin is a little cross that is the glue in your body, little laminins. And laminin is the Lamb of God. This is another way, this is another kind of light. This is more uh, lunar, lunar, moon. This is all really feminine. This is very masculine. This is kind of neutral light. But everywhere in the alphabet, I can sit here for hours and, and speak about how all of this is light. They're all light letters. Um, and they all correspond in gematria with their respective numbers. 
uh, one, Beth in Hebrew means both. Thank you, Stan Tenen, great Hebrew scholar. Clarity, the third light, clarity. Um, ether, the fifth element, the quintessence. There it is, E. F, uh, fire, photon. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but just this will inspire you to see what the alphabet really is. Okay? Lab. Lapidus, stone. It all goes back to this rock, this stone of the Taurus field. Oh, I'm going backwards. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jabulon. I spoke to a mosquito Indian uh, in Costa Rica last month. And I said, uh, what's your God called? He says, Javel. Hmm, Jehovah Baal, Jehovah El, Jehovah uh -huh. Elohim in, G in Hebrew. Uh, I knew he was going to say God's name is Javel. I just knew it. And then I said to him, uh, and what do your people say about the earth? Is it this ball, this Copernican, satanic, Jesuit Santa ball? He says, well, I hope you don't laugh at me when I tell you that all the Indians taught that the earth was a uh, horizontal plane and it's stationary. And I just knew he was going to say that because I know my syncretism. I just know the answer. Even I didn't have like a hesitant, oh, what's he going to say? Is, is he wrong? He's claiming to be this savant, which he was. And he came back directly with the right answer. It's a stationary plane. Hmm... What do we got here? I, I, haven't, I haven't really uh, sort of gone back and, and addressed all these presents. It's been sitting there for a while. Um, Baal is Allah. It's just another way of saying Allah. That's why they go to the cube in Mecca. The cube, Walter Russell says, the cube shape is in counter space. The sphere is spatial. So my body is, is from a spherical point of view. But in counter space, my body is always walking around in a cube. Walter Russell taught this as well. A Merkaba? Yeah, pretty much. Yep, Merkaba. Ba. Ba is the bowl. Mm, Beltane, another cross quarter day. Embolic, another cross quarter day. It's always got bell, bale in it. The old bellisk. Akbar. Allah Akbar. Well, there it is twice, isn't it? And that's why this month's ending burr, it's Baal. It's in honour of the god Baal. It's just another derivation. Lots to meditate on here, guys. Look at that, Hannibal Barca, one of the most famous, wonderful saviours who tried to liberate us from the yoke of slavery of Rome. Unfortunately, he failed. He was a hero, in my opinion. He crossed the Alps with elephants and he did, tried everything to save Spain and the Phoenicians and Carthage from Roman plunder. And they've been plundering us since. And there it is, Hannibal. It's all Baal. And, and by the way, Barcelona is in honour of him because that's where he came from, to defeat Rome. Bar is Baal. The Bar Society, it's Baal. Raising the Bar. Barrister. Baron, bark of the tree, bard to make, you know, the, as to speak as a bard, a barbarian. It's all the, what's a barbarian do? The Romans said everyone who doesn't speak Greek is a barbaros because he's going bar 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 bar. He speaks rubbish. Mm. Can't understand it. It's in, intelligible, mm. unintelligible. Because bard is the bog. Remember, speaking all, mm -hmm. speaking barbarically. All goes back to the ball, guys. This is the proof. Huh? The rock. Exactly. The rock. The rock? This one. You're on. The next one? Yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, I love this. Uh, uh, and Jeremiah. And they built the high places for Baal. Of course they did, because Baal is the true God. It's the hyperbola. It's sonoluminescence. God is light. I worship light because light is conscious it's conscious intelligence energy 
you know, holy wood. It all comes from this. And where do they put the kingdom hall? They put it the, always on the, on the hill. Hill is, again, the rock. Gibraltar. Jabal, Jabel, mountain. Stilly, stole, stone, star, stella, they all come from this. All words go back to those three guys. Horus, Boris, Halus, Gothic for what? Rock, of course. See, when you go through all the languages like I've done, and you do a little bit of research, or a lot, as I've done, and you come up with this, and it all goes, it all points back to those three words. The trinity of words. All is Atum. Atum is the mother word of all words, and it has two children. Red shift, blue shift. Ball and tall. Period. No argument. Not after this. These are all the bales. I can't, can't stop. I'm only like about a one-tenth of the way through this. Unfortunately, I don't like to, you know, uh, skim through material. I like to be thorough because I don't like people criticising the truth. Not me. I don't have no ego to speak of. I've done with the ego. There's nothing in this plane that interests me. Nothing. Oh, it's boring. It's beautiful. But on the other hand, it's boring. And truly, I'm out of here. I don't want anything. I don't want Ferraris. I don't want women. I don't want music. I'm out of here. I want everlasting glory. So I've got no ego to protect. People think I'm, when I'm on Facebook and I'm defending the truth and rather, you know, Aryan like I am. They think, oh, you're so egotistical, Santa. No, no, I don't want anybody to defile the truth. I've had enough of these false pedophile pastors standing on their soapboxes teaching, teaching bullshit to poor, unsuspecting people and deceiving them. This is the ultimate truth and there is no other. Bale. It's all Baal. It's all the bull. These are all scriptures in the Bible, guys. Baal, Perazim, Baal, Sh and, then, and, then, and yet the Jewish Bible is full of Baal, and then and on the other hand, they will criticise it. Oh, it's from the devil, isn't it? You see the tricks, guys? Don't be deceived. <clears throat> I like this one. Bullion. Bull and lion. Both two thick signs of the zodiac. Oh, Hmm. Ezekiel and Revelation both paint God as a four-faced creature. The face of a man, the face of an eagle, the face of a bull, and the face of a lion. Well, those are the four fixed signs of astrology, sweethearts. <laughs> Not anyone, anyone who thinks otherwise that, that you know, everything is literal in the Bible. On, Sorry? I'm, fast, I'm fixed on uh, rock, stone, and, and how that all comes together and might save you a question when I see it in here. Oh, you're going to find Stone, rock. Deuteronomy. Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy 30. It'll come up. Uh, God is called Sur in Deuteronomy 34, 32.4. Can you see the Taurus there, guys? That's God, and, and, and in the footnotes, they tell you it means. The rock. God is the rock. Taurus. You can just pretty much you can just make a D out of that. Durable. Bull. What is durable? Taurus fields are durable, aren't they? My torso is durable. Durable. Everything goes back to the Taurus ball, guys. Blue shift, red shift. It's a blue shift, red shift world, electrical. <clears throat> the cerebrum, Aries, the cerebrum, the small brain, the cerebellum, is Taurus. Aries rules the top of the head. The ram, with his horns, and the bull, with his horns, rules the bottom of the head and the shoulders. So, both of those brains, sensory nerves, motor nerves, are causing your feet to ramble <laughs> and rumble, rubble, rabble, rabbi, rabinim, the children of Ra, to revel, to ravel, to be rival, to rebel, rambo. 
Hollywood. Thank you very much. Royal, rule, repel, travel, reveal, revere, reply. Play is another way of saying pole, play. This is a playing field. This is the palace, the place where you live. Ah. Aries in French, how do you say it? Bellier. Bellicose. What does bellicose mean? Warmongering. Whatever. Bellicose. Polemic. To fight? To fight. Aryans, the fighters. Hours of stuff in here. These are again uh, pure. To purify means to purify with fire. There's so much in here, guys. I've, I've, you know, the L is always the number 12 in the Hebrew, Greek, English alphabet 12 because it's a circle, a cycle always has 12 parts to it. That's why L is always number 12 and R is always 18. Six, six, six. Twelve is six plus six. The Bible has sixty-six books. Twelve. Everything's about twelve. Jesus and his twelve disciples. Jacob and his twelve sons. Israel and his twelve tribes. Ishmael and his twelve tribes. The twelve loaves on the table in the temple. The twelve precious stones on the effort of the high priest. The twelve pillars in the temple of my God in Revelation. It's never ending. It's all about 12. The Bible is all riddled and ridden and, and replete with 12 because it is the greatest astrological treatise that you will ever come across. Spirit. See the word peer? To, spirit is air. It's pneumatic. It's to breathe. All these words are related, guys. Please, please be diligent and... I put a lot of time into this, you will understand everything. Carbon, carnal, bond means good. Carbon is six neutrons, six protons, six electrons. It's the number six in the periodic table. The good flesh, the good carnal. What is all matter made of? 99.999% of the universe is made of carbon 12, the isotope of carbon. Carbon 12. Upgrading to carbon 7. 7 and 12. 12 chromatic musical notes, 7 diatonic musical notes. And these are the 7. An octave. Octave is another way of rounding out the septenary. I don't know. Remember the R in the middle? Abrasion. This is a very good word because abra, in Italian, your lips are called labra. And in Spanish, you habla with your labra, Spanish Italian. Deborah is the prophetess in the Bible. Deborah. Because she abra, her labra, to speak. In Japanese, daber, daberu. Deborah means to chat, to speak. In Hebrew, I love doing this stuff. Daber in Hebrew is Deborah to speak. In Japanese, Daberu is to speak. I've, I've connected Hebrew and Japanese so many times. I can give you a million words, infinite amount of words, because I've, I've learned those languages. I don't speak Hebrew, but I speak Japanese. The basic, but I do. So, um, these are the, the gra root words, grail, glory, they're all the same word, grand, great, gracious, gold, god, gate, I've already done that. Gotta, gematria, geometry, grammatia, and there it is. You see, uh, that is the gate. They're telling you it's the portal. I have to keep going, guys. There's the creep root of words. 
Krishna, Kronos, Krista, cryptic to hidden. Remember I said krit, crest means black light, hidden, dark, resting light. Krio in Greek means cold, it's also cold. White light is hot, black light is cold. Krio. And it also gives you chakra, chariot, your body is a chariot, it's a merkaba. Charisma comes from the chrism, the cerebrospinal fluids, that if you practice the right kind of white tantra in your life, you will save all of your fluids and your brain power, and you will restore your nervous system because when you discharge your fluids and eliminate them, the quicker you die. Thank you, George Carey. Yeah. Character, charity, care, charm, karma, carnal, harm, army, all these words, they all are interrelated. And when you meditate on this, you'll get it. You will not. And there's the kid on. Ki, that P, that is a, an R in, in Thai That's the Christ cross, the Constantine cross called the Labarum. The kid on. And that's the key cre- root words. Why is it a holy cow? Why does God have the copper sea in his temple with eight... Uh, sorry. Excuse me. With twelve copper bulls holding it? Because it's astrological. Thank you, Josephus. Thank you, Philo of Alexandra, who told us that the Bible, whenever it speaks of twelveness, it's speaking about the Greek zodiac. In Strong's Concordance, when Jesus is walking on the circuit of Galilee, just consult your Strong's Concordance. Good little church-going Christians, and it will tell you, thank you Strong's, that it is the ecliptic of the sun and the zodiac of the Greeks. Alright, you see, cow comes from Abbas. Um... And Abbas is the apple. So the bull and the apple, it's all the same thing. It all goes back to the Taurus field. Everything goes back there, guys. Um, well, there's so much interesting stuff here. Where to begin? Hmm. Yeah, I'm only doing this superficial value, really. My, my. Can a bull, the priest of Baal, can is the priest. That's why the Vatican... The serpent priest. Bati is serpent. Can is priest. That's why he's a con man, yeah? <laughs> Canberra, the capital of Australia. The priest of Bra. Because the Vatican owns Canberra. The Vatican-bra. Anyway, there's so much there, I don't know. Serapis. The syncretic god of the Hellenes in the um, the time before Hypatia, before they destroyed Hypatia, that they went in and they destroyed the image of Serapis, and then they burned. No, they uh, they got Hypatia in the Alexandrian library before they burnt it, and they skinned her alive. And they said the Christian mob absolutely took all the flesh off her bones. That when they threw the bones to the dogs. The dogs didn't even chew those bones because there was nothing there. That's how zealous they were against syncretism, the Christian Catholic mob of Rome. Okay? Now, I shouldn't use Catholic because it's a beautiful religion. I'm talking the Vatican. Okay? Catholics and Christianity is just a beautiful... I'm, I'm Christian. I'm Jewish. I'm everything. That's what syncretism does. It's inclusive, it's not exclusive. I'm all of those things. All of them. Because they are all like different genres of music. I love blues, I love jazz, I love baroque. I'm in love with all the forms under this creation. I said before that I'm, you know, I'm wishing to get out of here. Not because... Uh, well, I've, uh, there's a better world waiting for us. And it's not in this conditioned place. Okay? And that's, I know of that world. I see it all the time in my meditation. So that's why I'm not being, you know, arrogant and saying that I'm going to leave this behind and it's all boring. It's just, 
by degrees and just by comparison to what is really there that I use that expression. And even the Gnostic Christians who said that this world is an abortion. It's a, it's a horrible abortion of the, the archons and the demiurge. They weren't saying that in totality, but by comparison. It's just that people who read those Gnostic Gospels you know, take it the wrong way because they've got mundane minds. Simple. Okay. The bull becomes the veal. You see how veal is connected to bull? Have a look at those words. Even evolve. Backwards for love. Love will help you evolve and sublimate and transmute and become better when you go back to cause. Okay? And then vellum, the scheme of a veal. It's all connected, guys. Elves. What about elves? Arbor vitae. You know, <laughs> that's what the, the phallus is called. The tree of life. Well, because the phallus passes life unto the woman, into the uterus, Taurus. And then uh, phallus becomes philon, which is actually a leaf. Remember the fig leaves that God gave Adam and Eve? Leaf comes from phil, and you can see it backwards, it's phil, leaf. And that's how God confused the languages, because from language to language... See, I speak all the Latin languages. I speak Italian, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and a dialect which I grew up with called Calabrese. So I've got five Latin and English, which is a sister language of the Latin languages. So I see how it works. In Italian, we say buongiorno. You go over to France and you say bonjour. In, Italian, in Spanish, they say buenos dias. And in Portugal, they'll say bon dia. You see how things change and shift and, and mix up? That's the confusion of Babylon. They're all speaking the same language. It's just that certain genetic places will say the same words but jumbled up. It's like a dyslexic thing, but it's all one language. And what is that language? Let's see if we've got it all. We've got it yet. You want to help me with this? Atomology, yeah? We call this atomology, this presentation. Well, when you study the origin of words, what do you call that science? There's atom hiding right there. Atomology is atomology. Make no mistake about it. Be more intelligent than the rest of the world, people. Intelligence is godliness. That's what I, I think. I think intelligence is the most beautiful. Love is beautiful. Um, consciousness. But I love intelligence. You know, I love seeing intelligence. <laughs> In people. And there it is. The physical world. Why is it physical? Because it all manifests in the phi ratio. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, rib. Adam gives a rib to Eve. Well, it's DNA. It's the atom is the DNA. DNA. D-N-A, hmm, let's try Dan, which is Adam, and in Japanese man is Dansei, Dansei, Adam, who has D-N-A, let's try another mixed up version of that, hmm, and, well, if we haven't got Andros, Andrew, which means man, or Andrew, which means manly, Another version is Nad. Nad, you know your little Nadis, your 12, 12 meridian lines and all the Nadis. Yeah? Nada means nothing in Spanish, but it means sound in Sanskrit. Sonoluminescence, DNA. 
Andrew, who has a hand. The hand is what defines a man. Man is also... Anyone speaking Spanish? What's a mano? So a man is a man is a hand. Okay? It's all there. These are all just anagrams of each other, of DNA. Dan. The lost tribe of Dan? Why are the Jews worried about the one tribe that's lost? Because Dan is Adam, and all the children of Adam, Atom, who have anatomies. See, we're all children of Atom. Adam. Because we all have anatomies. We're atomic. We're all atomic. So we're children of Adam. You know. Are you going to learn this at church? No. So whatever way you look at it, it goes back to the hand. Or the manus, the mind. Which comes from the moon. The moon is mental. In astrology, it's emotional and mental. What happens on a full moon? You see some lunatics getting around? People going mental. Moontal, lunatic, moonsters, demons. It's the moon. It affects your mind. Alright, that's a beautiful page. This is a great page. Phylon, leaf in Greek, becomes phallus. Pellus, the stone, etc., etc. These are all interrelated words and they all go back. Oh, and, and look at all the languages I've done there, guys. It's all, it's all one language. These are all genres of one language. I think I'm halfway now. Oh, I've got to get <laughs> I, I will do every slide, even if I have to go over. Wow. I don't know what to say, but these are all different etymological etym roots that go back to your stone there, sister. Oh, who was the... Who was the stoner? Stoner is the sister the stoner. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. The rock. And rolling. And rolling around. Looping in the pool. The field fell. Adam and Eve fell. Adam with his fellus. It's all there. On the one side, you have, look at this, wisdom, Isis and Adam, Adam and Eve. Oh. There you go. Turkish, damat is groom. Funny about that. When you go to the Cuban restaurants around here, what's a woman's toilet? What do they call it? <laughs> Damas. Uh, you see it everywhere, don't you? Well, huh? You mean Adam? The Adamites with, with their anatomies. Damas. So you've got Adam, Madam. Don and Dame. Don and Donna. And Madonna. Dan and Dana. Dimitri, Demeter. Dean, Adina. Daniel, Danielle. Damien, Damiana. Tommy, Timmy, Tammy, Tony and Tina. <laughs> All done. <laughs> anyway, that's a good page. There's a lot there, guys. Can't, can't stop. These are all words within words. So, lexigrams from the paradise, the Garden of Eden. So, the sly serpent did lie. Um, look at that slick lick when a guitarist plays a slick lick slack and lack slash and lash slip, a slip of the lip spill the pit, spill and pill spell and pell uh, oh, look. one who kills with skill slaughter laughter uh, revolve and rock. How do you evolve? By revolving in circles of necessity. Cycles of necessity. That's what our souls are doing. Right? Going around and around. Evolving. Anyway. I'm going to get to the good stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. A 
again. See, look at the owl. This is Ken Wheeler's ferro cell. That's the torus field. The plane of inertia and the hyperbola going that way, flattened out stereographically. But that is a torus field. All magnets are doing that. That's the magnetic field. All magnets. And you see this, the plane of inertia going down here, and then the hyperbola in the eyes. The bull's eye. The torus bull's eye. The eye of the storm. Okay, you're getting it? It all goes back to that, the true atomic model. Please have a look at that decibels, dumbbell, boil. There's a lot there, a lot, lot there. Turnips. Can you see the torus fields there? Turn turnips. Everything is to uh, torsion fields, turning. Why do you talk? When you talk, you create torsion fields. Sound is rotating. When it reaches your ear, it's done many, many circles of rotation. Let's get to some good stuff. Bulk. We've done most of these. <laughs> There's some more. Just this is all sort of miscellaneous. There you go. Torus. Uterus, clitoris, vulva. It's all part of the body. Guitar. Sitar. Tar is torsion fields. String. In all languages, it's tar. String. When you pluck it, it makes a tar sound. Bulerias. I play flamenco guitar, so I play bulerias. It's um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Do, 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 do. That. It's all in twelve. Blues. Twelve bar bar. Blues. Blues is blue. Ball. Okay, it all goes back to that. They're, the gods, what are they doing? They are turning, or everything is turning. Magnetic fields turning. Krishna's always making butter. Better. Here is a country in Australia before the white man came and planted his uh, Rothschild Windsor corporate uh, Union Jack flag on that beautiful nation. I used to live only about 20 minutes from that in Queensland. It's an, the, one of the original nations in Australia called Turbo. 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 Uh, it's an Aboriginal nation located around the region of present day Brisbane, Queensland. And I've done Aboriginal words too. Amazing. All goes back to Tor Bull, Taurus and the Bull. I used to have a car called Torana. It's like a Mustang here, it's a muscle car. I used to love the big V8s with Chevy. Had a 308 Chevy, big small block, fully worked, Rochester carburetor and all of that stuff when I was young. In fact, there it is. There's me and my sister, that's my Torana muscle car. The big mags and everything, big Chevy motor in it. And, um,. <laughs> I remember. Okay, so Torana, what does it mean in Aboriginal? To fly. It's torus. Rotating torus fields, torsion. It's in Aboriginal. There's the nation of Torbal and there's the car. Torana, an Aboriginal word. Bellevue, Bella Vista, everywhere around Miami. Have you seen all these bells? <coughs> Bellevue, Bella Vista, Balmoral Castle. Uh, you know, Bel Air, it's all Bel. Belgravia. There's the crown of Thor. Uh, Arthur and his twelve knights, or Thor, Jupiter. 
Zeus, Jesus, with his 12 disciples. Same thing. It's the corona of the sun, which is the crown of thorns. It's always the sun. Arthur and his 12 knights. There you go. Look at all those travelling words. Turn, trail, tread, train, track, truck, tarmac, travel, trajectory. Dori in Japanese is road. Backwards, road. You can see the same word, but in reverse. There's your lumbar, the tree of life. Glastonbury tall. A tell is a mountain. The L and R being interchangeable. There's your obelisk. The vault of heaven. <laughs> it's Taurus field. Right. Tower of Babel. It's Taurus field. <clears throat> All of this is magnetic. This used to be. This was Tartarian uh, science, um, technology before the Romans and the Jesuits. Uh, established the electrical grid, which we pay for. Before that, these, were ch these Taurus fields were channeling energy from the magnetic field for free. And people would go to temples to do two things, heal and consciousness. Healing and consciousness. They were centres of elevating the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Omphalos. Can you see the fall? Can you see the cup? It's a Taurus field. The chalice, the holy grail, the vajra, they're all Taurus fields. The Ouroboros, it's the Taurus field. To bore, to burrow. The phalanx of the Romans or the Greeks, impregnable, because phal is the rock and it's impregnable. Bellicose, belligerent, polemic, Apollo, blistering, ballistic. All of the ballast, bolster, bullet, bulletin, blast, blaze, all comes from the bolt. Javelin. Remember my, um, my misti, mistizio, uh, indigenous friend in Costa Rica? He said uh, his god is Javel. It's Javelin. It's the, the bolt of Zeus, electrical energy. Javel. Bale. Balustrades. Ballast. There's some more words. When you follow along in meditation on all of this, it's, it has, a, unfortunately, I just have to show these slides because it will go online and you can sit there and meditate on one page at a time as long as you like because you can hit the pause button. So that's the benefit of this. I hope you're getting value nonetheless. And you're getting it. But uh, if you're quick in spirit and in mind, all of this will have absolute, perfect, syncretic value for you. I'm trying to get to some really good slides at the end because it's going to crystallise everything. What do we got? All right, I've got half an hour until we do answers, question and answers. Again, here are some amazing uh, words from all the languages. All of them. They all go back to this. There's the Taurus field there. It, either way you look at it, that's a target or a bullseye, isn't it? Yeah. Well, tar and bull. It's, it's all there. It, it's, it's never not this. Pupil. Pull. Pull. Pupil. The eye of the bull. You see? And if you're a good pupil, and you a good disciple, the disc of the bull, you will learn the Torah, the Torah field. Good pupils always study the Torah. You cannot know God without the Torah, because it's talking about rotating fields. God is a rotating field, the Bible tells you. Psalm 84.11 if I'm not wrong, uh, the Lord God is a sun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You mean the Bible tells you that God is a sun, the sun in the sky? Yes, it does. It's in Psalms. You don't have to imagine it, and you're not going to be blasphemous. You can just quote the scripture. It's right there. 
hail, holy, holy, hallowed, hollow. It's all the same word, guys. That's why the, the Pope is telling you with his monstrance. You know how many rays are shooting out of there? 66. Two less. 64. 64. Your DNA codons, 64. Why is it 64? Let's do this just quickly. When I do my solar gazing, I always, always see the cross. There's the sun. I always see this. First thing I do, I look at the sun. Bang. It's like fluorescent cross. It's always there behind the sun. That's what I see. Then I squint my eyes a little bit more, just change the pupil configuration, and I see this. Then I go a little bit more, and I see this. Like 16. Yeah, it is. Can you show the camera? Mm -hmm. yeah. I took it in the airplane. Good for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's always there. So Christ is the cross. Same word. Remember the kri root words from the presentation on the show? Then you go a little bit further, dear ones. You go from 16 to... I can only see 32. I, I get to 32 and that's I can't see the 64. Notice I've made it red. You wonder why the Freemasons have 32 degrees? And then they tell you, that's it. That's what this dude's doing. It's the monstrance. Double that is 64. I can't tell you the, enough the importance of these guys. I have, to, I have to rush, unfortunately. I just hope you're getting value. I'm sure you are. Oh, wow. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Yeah, because they're atoms. <laughs> they're eyes. They're bull's eyes. Taurus bull's. The hairs of his head are white. Hairs is hare. Hare means the sun. Samson and his hairs. His seven braids of hair that Delilah got cut with the Philistines. Well, those seven braids is Ra, the seven rayed God. Samson, the seven braided God. It's the hair of the sun. Because when you look at it, it's hairy. Hare. <laughs> oh man, I just love the literal religions and, and what they teach. It's like... Parents telling their children that Santa Claus is going to come down that chimney. You better keep your camera on on the 24th of December because you'll catch him. You won't. There it is, guys. Vortex. What's vol? It's vol. Volume. Vault. Bolt. Pyramid. Same thing. It's pill. All those words. All of them. Orbis. Terrain, the orb of the earth. Not, it's not telling you that it's a ball. Orb means body, and it means the torus field surrounding it. I'm getting to the good stuff, guys. These are beautiful words in Hebrew. Look at this: borealis, hyperborea, um, ibaru, iba, Hebrew, Iberians. Funny how the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal is where a lot of the medieval Jews came from, you know, Moses Ben Ben I forget all the great great scholars that came out of Spain that were Hebrews, the Eber River in Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. That's where the Hebrews come from. It's Spain. <laughs> Siberia? Mm -hmm. Iberia? In every field, there is only torus fields. Water, we call it a whirlpool, pool. Earth, vol. Air, tor. Fire, twister, devil, bull, diabolical. The devil is bol, dia, diablo, diabol. Always go back to the bull and the tor, guys. Don't miss it. You'll miss the whole show. Oh, thank you, Egyptians. Uh, what's Kronos doing in the in the week? Why a, why an hourglass? Um, it's got something to do with time, perhaps. It's all there.
There's no mistake. Just pay attention. Oh, this is the Jehovah's Witnesses in New Jersey, their assembly hall. Oh, well, look at there. You've got the uh, winged sun disc there. And they're going in there, paying, making donations to the Rockefellers and J.P. Morgan, who fund the Jehovah's Witnesses, and they're rubbing it in their noses. You're yeah. worshipping the sun, because Psalms 84.11 says, The Lord God is a blazing sun. 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 Thank you very much. You good pupils. <laughs> <laughs> Horus, the hour maker on the horizon, horrible, horrific Horus, the sun, burns you to death. Look at that word, Torma, it's those devices, it's all atom. There's Noah and his seven mem uh, members that the rainbow of Noah, the ark, arco iris, it's the rainbow. It's electricity. Noah didn't exist literally. Please, people, everyone, the world, anyone watching, please, wakey wakeys. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Blue shift on the left and red shift on the right. This is one of my favourite pages. I love all of this. And I even went to the detail of making it all <laughs> sexy and <laughs> crazy. I spent hours on this. But look at that, Shem has two sons, Elam and Aram, the ram and the lamb. Okay, here we've got Eve, who is Venus, who is even, who is the wave. Adam, Mars, is odd and the pulse. Radiation wave, transverse wave. Eve is evil, vile, vain, devious, poison ivy. Mars is malum, malicious, malaise. Venereal, venomous, fever. Remember that song? I got a fever. You know, it's all Eve. Malady, malignant, malign. That's Mars because M A L is M A R. One day she's venerable, one day she's evil. But it's always Eve to revere. Virtue, marvelous. See, now they're good. Here they're bad, and here they're good. So when, whenever you talk about. In astrology, the Saturn is evil and the moon is... Yes. One half of their functions, one half of their archetype, always consider the other half. Always. I hate when people take my work out of context and just, Oh, I heard you say that Saturn was evil. And, oh, oh, You just don't... You don't know what to say because people hear what they want to say. I want what they want to hear. So it's a matter of, you know, um, but here we go, the wave, Ave Maria, Eve, it's the wave, the sign wave, the sin of Eve, to eat of the apple, which is physical, Adam, Onda, yeah? undulate, it's still the wave, she is the sine wave, he is cosine, we remember when uh, Eve ate the apple? Huh? First thing she did was she, she sinned the sine wave, so she gave it to the cosine, cosin, cosinner, and he also became a sinner. Oh, but the Bible says Eve was the first one to sin, but she seduced Adam. Otherwise, Adam wouldn't have done that. It's all, it's all this. That sign, and what's this? That's the sine wave, yeah, the sinusoidal wave, sinusoidal. There's the sin. It's, it's the sine wave, the sin of Eve, the wave, Ave Maria, thank you very much, the one who will save you, and the one who gave you your body, your mother, and this is cosine, sine and cosine. Uh, we've all been to school and learnt that, haven't we? Anyway, uh, I like some of these. Uh, ever and more. <laughs> you and ran. Revel and marvel. Oh, there's some, some, some great stuff in there. Boas and Jackham. Mercy and severity. It's always Mars and Eve. Severity, Mars, mercy. And the other way around as well. Please don't polarise any of this. Please. 
Whatever is evil on Eve's side is also evil on Mars' side, and vice versa, good and good. Always. You will see this everywhere. Now, isn't that funny how we have Satan in Isaiah 14, 12. Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, O oh, morning star. Revelation 22, I have been sent to da -da 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 -da. I'm the root of David, the offspring of David, and the bright morning star. Guys, Satan is the Taurus field, Jesus Baal is the hyperbola. Period. There's, there will never be an argument after this. It's, it's done. There's the Bible telling you that Satan is the morning star and Jesus is the morning star. You... Just quote the Bible. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Saturn, in astrology, is the ruler of uh, Earth, Capricorn, and Aquarius, air. And the Bible says he's the prince and the power of the air, and he is the god of this world, Earth. Then you've got... Jupiter, Ju Zeus, Jesus, who is the ruler of, I will baptize you in air and fire, uh, or sorry, Sagittarius fire, Jupiter, and Pisces and Cancer, water, the ruler of the baptism of water. He went up out of the water after he was baptized. It's telling you clearly, it's all astrological. It's Satan and Jesus, Satan and Jupiter. That's the war. <laughs> and Saturn rules acidity, Jupiter rules alkalinity. It's the war in your body of the pH and keep the hydrogen potential and keeping it balanced in the middle. Satan will always be acidic and Jupiter will always be alkaline. Which one? In the middle. In the middle. Oh, here are some gems. I just got a fly. Um, one I want to point out is that. Uh, Zeus is standing on the Mount Olympus, Jesus on the Mount of Olives. One is the father of gods and men, one is the son of man. God of gods, king of kings. It's... Thank, you, Pete. Thank you, Christians, for calling Jesus <coughs> Zeus. Because that's, right. that's who he is. Jupiter, Zeus, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Pentecostals, and all of you church girls. Thank you for preserving the true name of God, Zeus. Thank you. So thankful for these churches. They keep talking about, oh, Jesus will save you. I know Zeus will save you. Thank you, church girls. You look fired up, don't I? We've got Aries Sun and Leo rising. Ascendant. That's hot. Oh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Seven is to sever. When white light goes through the prism and gets severed into seven, you have Snow White, magnetism, and the Seven Dwarves, the colours of the rainbow. The sun has always got his arc in the seven colours, helping him to make the world, and that's who the dwarves are. Oh, this is a beautiful page. Got no time. Sorry. Again, the lamb and the bull, Aries and Taurus. This is. A, I spent hours making these and I, I could spend days explaining them all. There you go. The Tartarian Empire worshipped a lamb called Baromets, and the Freemasons have Baphomet. Baromet, Baphomet. Same word. There's the Tle Roma, the Menorah. There it is, Deuteronomy 32.4. Sorry, I misquote, I said 34.2. Here it is, the rock, Sur. And look at, in Italian, blue is Azzurro, the uh, Italian football team. They wear the blue, and they're called the Azzurri, the blues. Huh? 
Well, that's the tour. Tour is the tour. It's all the Torah field. It's all the Torah field. Please learn the Torah. In Russian, it's the Tsar, it's King. Yeah, the Tsar. Exactly. It comes from Tour. Hail Caesar. Hail is Hare. Hail is Helios. The Torah field. Everything goes back to Atum Bulto. Period. And this is. In my opinion, this is comprehensive, exhaustive proof. Undeniable. Undeniable. Lapis lazuli. What colour is it? Blue. Blue. Thank you very much. Oh man, I've done. There's so much in here. Christ is the living stone. <laughs> what? Christ is the Lamb of God. Uh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh boy, this is a satanic religion. Oh. All these horrible animals, oh, run away. Yeah. Here the church guy was condemning you for, for saying that you're, you know, Aries or Taurus and, 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 and all these animals. Uh -huh. The Bible's full of it. Revelation has 29 times it calls Jesus the Lamb of God. What say you worship a lamb? What's the matter with you, church guy? <sighs> Because these are archetypal animals that are archetypes of the energy of the ecliptic. Simple. Umandala. There it is. The Tsar. There you go. As you're Russian. Dos vidanya, dos vidanya, nisabut mayostradanya. That's probably the only thing you'll know in Russian. <laughs> there you go. Mars. Tia. Funny, isn't it? What's a Mata? Well, that's Mars, and Tia is Mars in Teutonic. And a Mata is a martial guy who dies in war for his cause. Okay? Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Martin. All names, all of them, go indirectly through all the seven planets back to the sun in the middle. All your names here, they are all solar. Santos, the sun. <coughs> Whose name? Tiffany. Okay. Thanos, Pharos, light, the sun. Tiffany. Which is ep epiphany. Epiphany, the sun, light. Polina. Polina, Apollo, Saturn, goes back to the sun. That's what Macrobius said in the 4th century. All the names of the gods, all of them, Neoplatonists of the 4th century said they all go back to the sun. Just give me any name or just think of your name and it all, whether you're a female or a male, they are all the sun. I've done this in other presentations, I don't have to do it here. You can go to my YouTube channel, it's all there. There you go, there's Mithra killing the bull, there's uh, Samson killing the lion. This is the sun going through the signs of the zodiac, because when the sun goes through Taurus, it kills the bull. It's symbolic, it's not literal. And Saturn, his father, he turns, and Elohim, which is Saturn, means what? Come on, Hebrew scholars. Elohim. The twisting, turning ones. Saturn, Jupiter, Taurus field. It's all magnetism. The doshas. I don't know I've got that there. Kabbalah, the cube and the ball. How to... Shambhala. That's, wow. What do we got here? I don't know. This is going to have to be for... There you go. Jupiter, Pater, Noster. It's all there. Abba, meaning Father. It's the Baal. It's the ball. Always. You see how many cities around the world? You've got St. Petersburg in Russia. And then in Brazil, you've got São Paulo, Paul and Peter. You rob from Paul, uh, Peter to pay Paul. You've got San Jose, 
you've got San Juan, it's all Jupiter and Paul, uh, uh, Apollo or Saturn. All of it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, I'm uh, thinking ahead. St. Peter's Square, St. Petersburg, <coughs> always due the war between St. Paul and St. Peter. Period. There it is. Jehovah Ra. Interesting. Psalm 23, the most famous of all psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. It's called Jehovah Ra. Thank you, Bible, for preserving the Egyptian God's name. Ra is Ra El. Isis, Ra, and El. Thank you, thank you. It's all there. They can't hide it. You just got to teach it correctly. There's the Cabal families. Look at those names. Astor, Este, Torlonia, Castro. Fidel Castro is a uh, is an Orsini. No, he's a Farnese. Farnese, the most powerful family in the world. All of these names, they all come from the Taurus field. Rockefeller, Rothschild, Russell, all of these. DuPont. What does DuPont mean? From the Pope. Pontifex. They're telling you it's a Catholic family. What was the Kennedy? Anything? Kennedy. Again, Irish family goes back to Cohen, Collins, Columbus, Cristobal Colon, Kennedy, Ken, Con, Conalists, the priests, the Vatican, the Kennedys own the Vatican. Kennedy. Think about it, guys. You'll learn all this from this presentation. Congressional bills, we did that before. There you go. These are all these words, blue shift, red shift. All of them. And they are all counterparts and opposites of each other. Pollux and Castor, I've already done that. All the twins in the Bible. It's red shift, blue shift. There's Pollux and Castor, blue and red. Mars is red, Venus is blue. All right, here's where I wanted to get, because we've only got about uh, 10 more slides. There's the monad, black and white light. That's the monad, guys. That's God at the source. The sun, right? Hey? The sun. Like exactly. The symbol. Exactly. Is that singular? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the one. God as the one, which transcends the dyad, which is everything below is all... They're not bad. <laughs> they're just... God differentiated, diluted, conditioned. That's all it is. But it's not bad. It's a degree of badness. You've got a dimmer switch on your light. You call this light, right? That's the room's full of light. You turn all these lights off and it's dark. That's still light. It's just a different degree of light. Darkness is light. There's the diet. The demiurge, dipole. Red and blue. Please, please, pay attention to this. This is electrical. Meditate on these. Two more minutes. Holy cow. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You've got Aries and Taurus. This is the Lamb of God, a holy animal. And then you've got a holy cow, Taurus. And then the Masons talk about Hiram Abif, which means simply Hiram above, the builder of soul woman's temple, the soul of man. Soul the sun, mon the moon. Soul means solo, and mono means Mono, Latin and Greek for the one. The, here is the, uh, the trinity. You see your RGB colours? Remember you've got red shift, blue shift. The third colour, centred in your heart with 12 petals, is green. St. Patrick is green, Osiris is green. You've got the green gods. Because it's telling you, there it is. The plane of inertia, the two vortices. The two vortices. Thank you, Walter Russell. That's how he explained it. He said the left brain is red, the right brain is blue, the corpus callosum is magnetic white in the centre. I can't stop, I've got to keep going. There is more of the, the, uh, the triad god. Now have a look at gamma. 
See what's going on here? You see mag backwards, gamma rays, they're magnetic. And these, alpha and beta, are red and blue. Alpha waves and beta waves. Gamma is magnetic gamma rays. That's what it's all about. And can you see the red, green and, and blue there? Red earth, blue sky, green vegetation. Okay, meditate on that. Here comes the tetrad. Thank you very much. Oh, yod he va he, which equals 26, yeah? Jehovah. Huh. They call this the tetragrammaton. And the Neoplatonists talk about the tetrahedron. It's all sacred geometry, people. That's all it is. Tetra is the tetrad. It's the fullest expression of the monad. I am the one who transforms into two. I am two that transforms into four. I am the four that becomes eight, after which I go back to one. It's this wheel. You know what they call this wheel, the eight-spoke wheel? They call it the Dharma wheel. Yeah, well that's Adam. It's the Atum wheel. And how, how does it become, well, think about it, yeah? You can work it out, how one becomes two. Okay, let's do it just in case. In, because people will take away what they want to, and it's one wave, okay? That's the year. When you make a circle, now you have two halves. Then you put the tropical points from Cancer to Capricorn. Now you've got four. Then you put the cross-quarter days in, and you have the eight-spoke wheel, which is universal, and it is centered always in the one. And there are the tropical days and the cross-quarter days. Uh, there you go. Please read that when it comes out on YouTube. <coughs> There's too much beauty in these presentations. Bellas and tamas, the belly, the bowels, and the tummy, the two. That's what it is. There's some goodies. More goodies. Master and monster, which one do you want to be? Mister, Meister, Magister, Superstar, Harvester, Taskmaster, Blockbuster, Teamster, Homestar, Persister, Songster, Hipster, Pastor, Faster, Sister, Misses, and then you got your hmm? fraudsters, imposter, mobster, gangster, trickster, boaster, jester, fester, sinister, and we're all stars. Take your pick which one you want to be. Choice is yours. Above we have divine light, looks, plasma, and pulse are the same word. Below you have mundane light, lumen, the vibration. Radiation, vibration. When you understand the difference between these two waves, you have the keys of the kingdom. They are the two keys. The radiation wave, superior, the vibratory wave, inferior. That's the field. The field is the ether. Green is an anagram for energy. You want that green aura. You want either a green or a golden aura. Check your aura. If it's red or violet, bad. Scarlet down below, violet on top. Some people think it's good to have a red chakra or a violet chakra. Well, scarlet is a harlot. And violet is vile and violent. Green. Green energy is pure energy. Green, gold and white, the same lights. I just released a presentation on the YouTube channel called Green, Gold and White Lights of Ascension. Check it out. And this is where I want to finish. This is the most beautiful thing that the scriptures will tell you. They will tell you. That's an electron. That's a hydrogen atom. Can you see the torus field and the bullseye? Mm -hmm. It's there. It's all there. And look at here. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, or the word, the door, so that what is seen was made out of what? 
made out of what was huh? what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So what you see on your screen is made from what? Zeros and ones. Can you see those zeros and ones? They're invisible. This is teaching you, the computer is teaching you how God makes things, how your bodies are here, how words are here, how language is here. It comes out of nowhere. All atoms come from nowhere but everywhere. From counter space. We cannot understand counter space because everything we see is temporal and spatial. It's a temporospatial or spatio temporal timeline existence. And we can only relate to that with our minds, conditioned minds. Once you meditate, you go beyond mind, uh huh. All of this, you will understand how it is that everything comes from what cannot be seen. And that's how atoms are. Beautiful. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Gustavo. Okay. Two, actually. Who, who, who is John the Baptist in this scenario? And is it true that we are going to be led into a Luciferian religion, one world Luciferian religion now? Uh, yes. Yeah. The New World Order, it's called global religion, global economy, global warming, global governance. And guess what? The globe does not exist. Only in the minds of fooled people who think we live on a spinning upside down ball. We're living on a horizontal stationary plane. Thank you, the Bible. I have made the earth stationary and immovable and fixed. It will never be made to move or to totter till times indefinite. And then it says that the Bible is a circle, not a sphere. You see this? It says that the earth is a circle. Is that a ball? Well, a round table is a circle. But it's not a ball. Globalism is a satanic Jesuit lie. And so, yes, they're going to try and give us a global, Luciferian, demonic, Jesuit, Freemasonic religion, but you already have the truth. So you can just ignore that rubbish. Okay? Because higher powers than these Jesuits and demons who are polluting the world but will deal with them. But Lucifer is not, is not a bad character. No, no, no. Of course not. There are Luciferians and there are Satanists. Lucifer is the sun who rules the day. Why is he bad and why is he good? Well, the sun is good by day because I don't trip over. And he leads my foot so I don't get hurt. But he causes me to see with my two eyes and to think that this world is real and stable and it's not. So Lucifer is a deceiver at the same time as he is a teacher. Then the night comes, Satan, black, and I'm walking, I can't see, and I trip over and hurt myself. He's a deceiver. But he teaches me to use this eye and this to listen, and he teaches me inner, introspective truth, whereas Lucifer teaches me ext extrospective False truth. So they are both teachers and they are both deceivers, the day and the night. That's all it is. And let hold that. It's with that question. Okay. March the 21st, equinox. June the 21st, solstice. September the 21st, equinox. December 21st, solstice. Here is the birthday of who? Jesus on the 25th. Let's, let's bring it around to here, please. Here it is. Here is December 21st. On the 25th, three days later, Jesus, in all religions, is born. It's the sun from Capricorn, the Tropic of Capricorn. Here is the Tropic of Cancer. Waxing. 
Where is John the Baptist's birthday, who is six months older than his cousin Jesus? Well, it happens to be on the 24th of June, exactly opposite Jesus. And he's the one who says, I will go on decreasing, waning, down to winter, inverno, inferno, invierno, infierno. Funny how in Spanish it tells you that infierno, hell, is invierno, winter, cold, not hot. And Jesus, he says, he will go on increasing. That's the birthday of St. John. That's the birthday of Jesus. The analema. Do you know what the analema is? Mm -hmm. Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Equator is here. This date here, when the sun comes, this is June the 21st, this is St. John, this is the head of St. John. Guess which day is the festival of the beheading of St. John? Well, it's, it's this day here, when the sun comes down here and hits August in Virgo, remember, the wife of Herod, Virgo, says, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And that happens on August 29th, right here, on the day that this, the sun is here in the Annalena. Birthday of St. John, beheading of St. John, birthday of Jesus. And guess what? From here to here is Aries. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Here we have Easter and we celebrate the Passover of the Sun because it passes over here. And on the 15th of April here, tax day, uh -huh. <laughs> And in the Roman times, the festival of Cerealia, Cerealia, the festival of cereals, and in the uh, Hindu religion, here is always celebrated the birthday of Sri Ram, the Ram of God, Rama, the Lamb of God, the Sun. Here, this is the 15th of March, of April, and, and John gets beheaded on the 29th of August, check out Wikipedia, it will tell you. It's all, it's, it's all. Thank you. The sun on the ecliptic. Uh -huh. All of it. See my Sacramento presentation called uh, The Gospel of the Stars, because there's only one gospel, and it's on the ecliptic. Nowhere else. So the monad in the beginning, where you said that the black was good, mm -hmm. with, was Christ, mm -hmm. then that would be because it's internal, right? Like, when it's you said about the deceiver versus... Because mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out the light and the dark, because the dark would be the night and, you know, the whole good and bad thing. Mm -hmm. So, I guess you explained it with the whole deceiving in the day. And yeah, that was awesome. Yes, that. absolutely. Um, this is blue because it's summer. This is winter. When the fall begins, the sun has to fall in autumn, the leaves turn red. That's the children of Israel going through the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea. The Passover, on March the 21st, Easter always happens in the Lamb of God, Aries. Aries is the sign of the exaltation of the sun in astrology, or the resurrection of the sun in theology. Exaltation, resurrection, same word. Over here in Libra, Saturn exalts Satan. This is Lucy. Whoops. Lucy is light. Lucifer means carrier of light. He is the one that teaches you in the day. This is the daytime. This is the nighttime. Because here you have 6 a.m., 12 midday, 6 p.m., 12 midnight. So the year and the summer and winter is night and day. Uh, sorry, day and night. Got that backwards. Lucifer, during the day, will protect you from tripping over, but he will, you, you will use your, your, your two eyes instead of your single eye. Whereas Satan, he will, you will trip over, 
and he will hurt you because you can't see, but you can see with your inner eye, your third eye. So he is, and, and, and Saturn exalts in Libra. Does that look like the sun setting? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it is. That's what Libra is because it's always here. Mm-hmm. So, when you know your astrology, you can just mm-hmm. transpose it to theology. The three pillars of high magic, astrology, theology, and alchemy. The three pillars of philosophy, ethics, physics, and logic. Okay. And that's what you're learning today. You've just learned that. So you're learning how to go from astrology to theology seamlessly. Lucifer, have you heard of uh, Lucy in the sky with diamonds? Have you heard of Luke Skywalker? This is the Skywalker. Because when the sun rises in the air, you see right ascends. Right ascension of meridian. Ram. He's always the ram. The lamb of God. Lamb is lamb. Lamb. In Revelation 21 it says, the, sun, the city of God does not need the sun, for the lamb shall be its lamb. Two words are interchangeable. See your palm. Palm. Lamp. Alma. What does it mean? Soul. Soul? The Lamb of God, the Ram, right ascending of Meridian, right ascending, this is going right. You'll see the sun when you, in the morning, you see it over in the east, it right ascends. It doesn't left ascend like in Australia. In Australia, it goes from east to west. Here in America, we're in the northern hemisphere. It right ascends, goes to the right and sets in the west on that angle. In Australia, it sets on backslash, I mean forward slash. Here it's backslash setting. I love watching the sunset here in America. So it's rare. In Australia, I always see it setting like that. Here it sets like this. And I understand right ascension of meridian. Where does right ascension of meridian begin every year? On the third month. March, on the 21st, 3, 2, 1, 0 degrees, countdown, is always on the third month, the 21st day, 0 degrees, right ascension of meridian, just ask any astronomer, where does the ecliptic begin? 0 degrees, Aries. There it is. So Luke Skywalker, they're telling you, Star Wars, George Lucas, he knows... It's all this. There's only this in the movies, in the tragedies, in the gospels, in the mythologies, cosmologies, nursery rhymes, fairy tales. It's only this. Only this. So when you learn, have a look at that. Can you see the word Baal here? The Lamb of God? The Son? The Soul of the Universe? Alma. The Palms. You see Akhenaten. What does Akhenaten teach? Well, he says, there's the sun and he's got his palms against the sun. Because you're making a loop with the sun. You're consciously connecting with the sun of God. Who put the sun up in the sky? Did you? I didn't. I think it's God's sun. Oh. God's sun? Who is God's sun? It's Jesus. It's the Saviour. It's the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Right ascending and meridian. It's all there. You just have to cross your disciplines. I'm just scratching the surface. Um, <clears throat> is there anything in uh, syncretism or etymology that would lend itself to understanding uh, Agenda 21? Mm-hmm. And then I preface, and, and all I found is. Uh, Ironically, in the Bible, if you read Numbers 21, it speaks of the book of the wars of the Lord, which is the lost book of Psalms. However, it's called the book of the wars of the Lord. And yeah. that, that's what's in Numbers 21 in the Bible. I don't know if there's anything pertinent with this, but, but what does etymology lend itself to Agenda 21? Uh, Agenda 21, well... I'm sure there is a connection. I wouldn't 
uh, be confident enough to say I know exactly what it is. I've got my opinion, but I don't want to share opinions. But 21, uh, I guess, is the 21 is a, is a very, it's the transitional date of sign to sign. You know? uh, uh. Pisces transitions on the 21st, again here, Aries to Taurus. The 21st is always that central uh, date where the signs cross over. So um, these guys like to use astrology, numerology, symbolism to make it uh, theirs because they're, they're powerful. It's, it's not because they're evil. See, people see the Illuminati using all these symbols that, uh, you know. I think it's Numbers 21. Yeah, there you go, 21. 21. Numbers. They're only using them because they're powerful. 21 would have its power for whatever purpose. So they wrote a book of wars. They're, not, they're all about warring. It is. Opposition. Why? Because Jehovah, it says in Ecclesi uh, Ezekiel, I think it's about 61 times, it says, I am the God of armies. I am the God of war. Well, because it's talking about Mars. Jehovah will be either Jupiter, Mars, or Saturn, or the Sun. When I read the Bible, I know when the Bible, when, when God is being referred to as the monad or the dyad, when it's referred to in the dyad, when it's talking about God being the God of war, that's Mars, clearly. In Aries, when it's talking about I'm the God of love, that's Taurus, Venus is the ruler of it. it you can see how it's a, a convoluted mishmash of beautiful wisdom. Jehovah is always, always the dyad. Any god who has a name is always under the monad because the monad is the anama in Sanskrit, which means no name. You cannot name the monad. He's nameless. The ein, ein sof. No name. Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, <laughs> Jehovah, all those Hebrew beautiful names of God, that's not the monad. It's the dyad. And the dyad is always the seven gods. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. Take your pick. Take your pick. The name gods are always the dyad, the triad, the tetrad, and everything else. The monad, I've conditioned you. Mm -hmm. Name um, Oh, where was I going? I just lost the thought. Uh, non non you said as soon as you named us, you conditioned us. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think where I was going with that. Well, you can see that's a, an you bring that in around to here, yeah? And you've got Amen. What's Amun? Atum is the unit. Amen, mental, mind, yeah, that's what it is, Amen, the hidden one. Amun, the hidden one, is mental. Mind is a condition. It's a condition. No matter how good your mind is, it's conditioned. This is mindless, the one. Amen gives you a name. There was something else too. There's, there's an Egyptian word for condition and land, which is rooted in name. It's actually the same word as name. It's a condition. It's earthly. Okay? So you don't want that name, that mental. You want to be nameless. No mind. No amen. In Jesus' name, amen. They're telling you, what's Jesus' name? Amen. It says in church, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's amen. The hidden one. It's the mental. Jesus and Christ are two different things.
That's why Jesus, speaking to his disciples in Matthew 23, says, Do not be calling anyone here on the earth your teacher, for one is your teacher, the Christ. Hello? Jesus is referring to Christ as a third person and not himself? Yeah, because the Christ is the spirit, black light of the universe. Jesus is the soul. The spirit in you is your nervous system. The soul in you is your blood. That's the soul. It's in your blood. The Bible says the soul is in the blood. Do not be eating the blood of animals. You cast. If you kill an animal, you cut. You throw the blood. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses won't have blood transfusion. It's, it's scriptural. It's not a hocus pocus fantasy. But if you that, do, then you make souls. Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> Never mind. You, you of the ascending type will overcome that, or anyone who's had a blood transfusion. No, no problem. You're going to transcend that because God overcomes all things. It's the ones who are limited and who are not ascending that it causes a problem for. Okay? Anything that they've done to dumb us down, we will be released. We will overcome because we desire it, and it's the desire that will cause that with the help of the gods. But that's why Jesus always points to the heart, because he's telling you, I am in your heart, your soul, and I am the blood. Christ is the nervous system. How to purify the nervous system and strengthen it is through good deeds. And that's your spirit. The Christ in you. Colossians 1.27 the, the Apostle Paul, he knew where Christ was. He said, the Christ is in you. It's clear. It's not historical. I have a, my last question. Is it because the Bible is a Bible that, that the God in the Old Testament is all war and sacrifice and the God in the New Testament is all love? The God of the Old Testament is Saturn, Kronos. That's why in the Old Testament you have a book called Chronicles. First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. First Kings, Second Kings, because the king is Kronos, hence Chronicles. The Second Testament, who's the God? Jesus. Jupiter. And what is Christianity all about? And, and the New Testament? About love. War's gone. Chronicles and, and Satan and Satan, the God of the Jews, has gone. So Jupiter, that, the God of the Christians, and that's why Jesus is a benefactor. dies on the cross. That's right. <laughs> Jesus is, in theology, he is a benefactor. Jupiter, in astrology, is benefic. Benefactor, in theology, benefic. In astrology, Saturn, in theology, a Satan brother, in theology, is malefic. He's a malefactor. He does bad deeds. In astrology, he is a malefic. It's all the same science. Why is planet Earth um, is all Saturn worship? <clears throat> it's not bad. And it's not good either. Well, why is all the why? Things or the capitalism, everything is just Saturn worship and symbols and symbology of the points of Saturn worship? Because Saturn is the greatest of all. He is the boss of time. When you go to a temple, remember in music you have tempo, yeah? Kronos. Your temple is your body. Saturn, the god of earth, gives you your body because he is the principle of coagulation. Without Saturn, none of these atoms can get together and make molecules and make form. Jupiter, his son, is the form. You see, remember, Kronos was eating all his children and Rhea, she thought, oh, I can get frustrated here, I, I, he impregnates me, and then... Oh, Saturn eats up all my children. So when Zeus was born, she she put a, a rock 
in a blanket and said, here, here, just, here's your baby. And sat and gobbled it up and thought, ah, great. Because Satan was, Satan, was, Satan was told that from your seed will come one that will overthrow you and castrate you and kill you. So he said, all right, well, I'll just impregnate Rhea and every time she has a baby, I'll just eat it. It's time. What is born in time dies in time. It cannot escape time, tempo, satin. It's just time. That's all it is. It's time. Time is an illusion. Time is your enemy. Eternity is your friend. The temporal world is, is fleeting. It's temporal. Temporal. It's just gone one day. Think back to all your wonderful memories. They're just a memory. They're gone. There's only the eternal now. And when we learn this through meditation, we'll, we will stop being so eager to experience things, you know. Oh, I'm young, I've got to experience it, we've got to do hang gliding, we've got to go sail boating, you don't. You don't, you just have to keep still, you know. Still and silent is better than any activity. I love playing the guitar and music and going out and doing things and eating and dining and meeting friends, but ultimately it's still pretty boring for me, you know, because I've got a taste of how unlimited it is and how much power I'm depriving myself of by being in this body. So when the Jews go to their temple, see we go to a church, Christians go to a church, they don't go to temples. Saturn, church is the moon. Moon is sin, which makes sinners, and it makes monsters, demons, lunatics, monkeys out of men. Just ask Churche, who turned Ulysses men into swine, the church, because that's what the moon will do. She'll so make a swine out of your ass real quick. But the sun will save you. The sun in the middle. So you've got Saturn on top, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. The Moon is the gateway of the gods in Cancer, at the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, sorry, the gateway of men. Saturn in Capricorn, at the top, in hierarchical, hierarchical order, he is the Grim Reaper. See, that's the scythe, the sickle. And he knocks on your door the day before you die and says, Hey, dude, <laughs> you're coming with me and you won't escape. When the Grim Reaper, Saturn, emaciated, calls, dressed in black, and he says, You're coming with time's me. Time's up. Time's up. Time. Because when your no time's up, yep. your time is up. Hold the thought, brother. I know it's good. I just got to finish. Look who's in the middle. The sun. The sun. It's the middle path. The sun is the saviour. It's the true saviour. It's a portal. It's a hole. It's a holy hole which you must go through. No one goes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't be deceived. Do not be a temporal satanic worshipper and do not be a sinner. The moon, as beautiful as she is, the goddess of heaven, she ain't going to see you. She won't say, you don't be fooled by the rishis who go back to the moon. You can go back, you can live on these planets. You can live in Mars, you can live wherever you want, but they're still all conditioned. This is the only place where you go to unconditioned cause, back to your true power. Thanks, brother. All of these uh, zodiacs, <clears throat> they're just here to control matter. Come in. They're just here to control matter. Pretty much. Yeah, it's, it's the dyad world. Astrology, that's why the churchgoers correctly say that astrology is from the devil. Because it is. And the devil is the half of Jesus, which is good God. Evil and good. Well, you've got the devil over here and you've got God over here. Okay? It's the dyad. Period. 
So yes, astrology is from the devil, but it's also from God. Not the monad. It teaches you about the monad. Remember, in the scriptures it says, the law of Moses is a shadow of the things to come. When, the, when Christ comes, then we'll, you will know the true law. Do you put your faith in shadows? And when I walk around during the day, there's a shadow. Can I say to the shadow, look, can you stop following me and get your own life? Kiss off. No, it's not autonomous. I'm autonomous. And these are shadows. And so, when you learn about astrology, you're learning about good and bad. Where's Saturn in your chart? Because you want to know when, when you're going to die and when all these bad things are going to happen to you. Same with Mars. And then you look for Jupiter and Venus, the benefics, to see when all the goodies are coming up in your chart. When you do your, you know, your transits and your future prognostications, you can see it. You'll see it. In, when Venus is in such a house, conjuncting such a planet, beautiful things are coming your way. When Saturn's transiting the eighth house, woo, or, or whatever, um, then you know bad things are coming your way. Because it... Trust me, I've done the charts of thousands of people, and when they say, oh, my father died, or I had an accident, and I, okay, give me the date. And I'll go back, and there it is. There's always Saturn and Mars, or the Moon, in the 8th, or the 2nd, or the 6th, or the 12th house. Always. And when something comes like, oh, I fell in love with my beautiful partner on such and such a date, Venus, Jupiter, the sun, they're always right. there, yeah. orchestrating everything. So, to answer your question, yes, astrology is all about conditions. Well, we're conditioned. We took the apple. We ate the apple. Is it Adam's apple? Or is it Eve's apple? It's the apples of Apollo. It's Adam's. All is atum. All is atum. One more. Thing. So yeah. So the in the flat Earth, if you're saying that I get the holes in the firmament for the stars, but then if the sun and the moon are not really up there, but in the middle, and it's a hole, like oh yeah, how good, is that a good hole? question. Yeah, how does that work? That's a good question because a lot of people get confused. I know that because they write to me, send me emails, and just there's a lot of confusion. Probably I don't elaborate enough on it, um, and you, you really can't. But uh, that's, that's the Earth. The plane of inertia is the planet of Eartha. Same thing. Please, please do not be deceived by the satanic Jesuit Copernicus, liar and deceiver, who is dwelling in hell forever and ever and ever, and all his followers. This is Mount Meru in the centre. Here you have the Arctic Circle, here you have Tropic of Cancer, here you have the Equator, here you have the Tropic of Capricorn, and here you have Antarctica, okay? You've got to flatten that out a bit. Now, Bhagavad Gita tells you that the Earth is the middle plane, the Midgard. Earth, heart, same word, that's your heart, remember that's your body. Here you have the circle of the moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, always in that order. Bhagavad Gita te teaches you that there are seven disc planes under the Earth. Okay? The bottom one's called Putala. And that's where all the hijos de Putala come from. Because it's hell. <laughs> You'll get that joke, won't you? <laughs> Putala, Mahatala, I forget the names now, but they all end in Tala. Mahatala, uh, gee, I forget, I used to know them all. But it's a 15, it's a 15 plane system. Now, this is the firmament here. Yeah, I'd probably call that the Van Allen belt, I don't know, the ion sphere, some sphere, I don't know what it is. But definitely, this is one of those belts that you can't penetrate to go out in space, you cannot. Now these, the Greeks say that the stars are like nails in the firmament. They're holes in the firmament. Thank you, Pierre Luigi Gina. Now these, they are all in this order. Remember the Jewish system it tells you that there are ten spheres that we live in. Because above that they have 
the firmament, Uranus. Then they have a, a, the, a ninth sphere, which is called the crystalline sea. And then the tenth is the primum mobile. So you've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the Earth is the eleventh. Okay? Uh, or the plane of inertia. Now, these here, they are not necessarily... They're concentric. The Jews will tell you that they're ten concentric, like the Russian dolls. You know, they're embedded in each other. And that's what the Russian dolls are all about. They're teaching you that we live in a, like an onion. These would probably... Uh, these run along the firmament, but they're very tight. I think they're very, very tight spheres. And they're not so expanded as you would think like these are. I believe that they are all packed along here like onion rings. That's, that's how, how it works. Is that answering your question? So the sun would be where, though? Because I've seen it in the in sky the looking like it's under the clouds. Like, it looks low. So how is that a hole? It'll be a hole in its... Uh, if, if these are all sort of like onion rings, right? This will be a hole in that, in that part. And as it goes around during... As the sun goes around the earth clockwise, every day, once, and all the planets as well, um, its hole is in its part of the onion shell. It's a hole in there. But you don't see. Like where, where it's connected to, pretty much. It's not in the firmament. It's not in here. No. Right. But they're all belts. It's yeah. fields within fields. That's how torus fields work. Mm. You see how they say that atoms, um, you know, like hydrogen is number one, helium's two, lithium's three, Bor uh, boron has got four protons, four neutrons, four electrons, beryllium five, carbon's got six. Nitrogen 7, oxygen 8, all the way. It's not. It's just that... Uh, it's just their frequency. And, and how many... It's a frequency thing. Um, so... What, what they'll have is... Torus fields inside of torus fields. See, your aura is a Torah, it's a Torah field. And you can see it, it's some uh, technology can capture mm -hmm. your aura, Torah field. But then it is known that more outside your Torah field there's another one, mm -hmm. and another one, and another one, and, and they don't know when it ends. So you're walking around, and you're meeting people, and they come into your energy field, and your energy has a feeling to it. Like there's Addison, he's filming now, and I get a feel for the guy, you know, he's a cool guy. <coughs> so are you. Because I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I'm in his field feeling his energy. And that's just the close proximity. Outside of that, there's another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. It goes on and on and on. And they are all encased by cubes in counter space. Counter space is the trick to understand. No, just to uh, add to that, what is your thoughts on, you say you said when you keep going lateral, there's more. So I think because what they do is always give us the truth, but it's going to be, you know, filtered with crap. But I feel that to explain even more, like, like you said, it's always going to go in that order because the actual heavenly bodies are, are, that's the height of them. So like the moon would be the lowest for us. And then when you look at the lights, like the northern lights and the southern aurora borealis, I feel those are like the, the, the borders of our uh, uh, Taurus field. And then when you go on the other side of that, this is from Martin Kenny, I don't know if you, mm -hmm. and when you go, when you go inside, that now they're in, you're in their realm. So you're in the Mercury realm. Oh yeah, Martin Kenny's right on the money when he says that um, out here, like Bumandula, yeah. you know, this is Bumandula, it's telling you that the earth is a mandala. Yes. Plane, yeah. Plane net. And, and he's got another ring beyond Antarctica. Yes. Which, uh, Sir Captain George Hubert Wilkins, the Tasmanian explorer in 1930s, logged in his book that he went 5,000 miles beyond Antarctica and found many lands.
with peoples on them. And then he's got another one and another one, and it expands as it goes out. It's an infinite plane. He's right on the money. And answering your question, you see that they're embedded in each other. And that's why, that's why your body is an anatomy made of mostly hydrogen and uh, four. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. How do those disparate atoms with different numbers come together and make molecules in the body? Proteins and, and what have you. Well, because they, they're in, like nest embedded in each other, like the Russian dolls. They just, they come together like Adam and even Adam and Eve. And they, they, they resonate with each other and they sit next to each other. And you see you've got millions and millions of atoms in your body. You're a, you're a constellation walking. That's what Origen said in the Alexandrian Gnostic Christian. He says, you yourself are a universe unto yourself with the sun and the moon and planets and stars in you. Man is the measure of the universe. So, what is that? What are atoms? Well, we just learned they're all holes in counter space, bringing information into projecting. That's the source. That's the RAM. That's the effect. Cause, effect. It's only a theatre. Theatre is an anagram for Earth, heart, and your body. So, uh, how does that happen? Well, atoms. They're little holes, wormholes in counter space that make space, temporospatial forms. And they're all coagulating and, and congregating to make your body. And they're all, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Embedding is one word, but there's another one. Um, phase conjugating. Nice. Phase conjugating. Dan Winter. More effective. Yeah, so one wave, nitrogen, finds a harmonic, oxygen, and says, oh, you're sexy, I'm going to hang out with you. <laughs> and hydrogen says, oh, oxygen, you are sexy, and they make water. Right. Hydrogen, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, both flammable. Oxygen burns, hydrogen burns, but water doesn't burn. It flips its polarity and becomes feminine, from masculine to feminine. So you see how these atoms... Atom and even sharing ribs and ionic bonding. Ione is the goddess Eve. Ionic bonding is simply that. An atom, a frequency says, oh, I love that resonant harmonic frequency over there. She's sexy. Kid up. How about we get together and make a body? Doesn't that happen when you make children? You say, oh, well, he's a handsome man. Oh, she's a sexy woman. I want to marry her. That's your anatomy is coming together. I've got an anatomy. My beautiful partner's got an anatomy. We get together wow. and have a third anatomy. That's what atoms are Atom and Eve. Wonderful. I think we <laughs> One more. Come <laughs> on, Christine, you put the hammer down. <laughs> well, we did start late, so well, this is the last. Last question. What is the Messiah? Huh? What is the Messiah? A Meshach? Of the Jews? Messiah. The Jews have got it right. They don't look to Jupiter Zeus as the Messiah and Saviour. They're waiting for Meshach, Saturn, in the age of Aquarius. Saturn's the rule of Aquarius. Pisces, bye bye Pisces, in 2012, finished. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Pisces is over. It's Aquarius over. began in 2012. Yep. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Anyone. And I can prove this in many ways. And I've done it. That's why the, the flag of Israel has the blue star of David, Saturn. Because they know. And as the Renaissance masters always said, Hail Saturn. We wait for the arrival of Saturn to save us. Not Jupiter. Jupiter's a tyrant. Yes, he's a benefactor in astrology and benefic in the New Testament. Time. So Jesus, Meshach, Jesus was not Meshach. the Messiah, and there was not a second. Yes, coming. he's the Messiah. They're all Messiahs. They're all saviors. Oh, Messiah is just the word for savior, basically. But yeah, not the Messiah. Saturn is the true savior because Saturn's on top. Saturn is Kronos, the crown chakra. Kronos, crown. 
it's, it's not his <laughs> Jupiter that we await our salvation. God, Brahma, is sitting right here on the top of your head. That's the true Messiah because Saturn is timeless as well. And we have to escape time and space only through Meshach. Meshach is the true Satan. When you know syncretism. If you don't, go. Yeah. You just you won't make it. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Long live syncretism.